Chapter 261. Great Daoyuan Calamity Chu Zan felt an intense sense of danger. If the blood fiends appeared in the northern zone and wreaked havoc there, they would definitely disturb his peaceful residence in the small courtyard. He had to ensure that the heavenly Dao laws covered the northern zone before that. That way, he would be able to change the laws so as to forbid the blood fiends from entering the northern zone. Then, he used the Chaos Dao mirror to deduce the time when the Great Dao Yuan Calamity would begin. The calamity will begin in ten years. Chu Zan cursed inwardly. This was too fast. It was impossible for him to break through to the Dao Yuan realm in ten years. However, he heaved a sigh of relief. Ten years was enough for him to devour the heaven and earth of the northern zone. Even if he had not, at the very least, he would be done with the southern region's laws. As long as the heavenly Dao laws were in control of the southern region, the great Dao Yuan calamity would not affect the southern region too much. However, the power of the heavenly Dao laws would be limited if it only controlled one region. He needed more regions, or better yet, an entire zone. Putting down the chaos Dao mirror, Chu Zan spent some time thinking about how he should deal with the great Dao Yuan calamity and how to obtain fate during the calamity, while also triggering the system's rewards. He needed to raise his cultivation level to the Dao Yuan realm as soon as possible. Only then would he have the confidence to face the great Dao calamity that came after that. It was time to see Ren Chongha and Xin Ying. It was time to prepare for the two calamities. The Black Moon Tower also had to push the Heavenly Dao Talisman plan forward, utilizing the Luo family's influence in the eastern region to lay a foundation. The Buddhism conversion process in the Demon Zone also had to be accelerated. The Blood Fiend race was very terrifying, but Buddhist techniques would be able to restrain them to a certain degree. For example, they could purify the blood fiend race and eliminate their ability to resurrect on the battlefield. The Buddhist race would also take advantage of the situation in this great Dao Yuan calamity to rise up, he would send them to every battlefield. The special characteristics of the ghost race should also be put to use. In the calamity, many cultivators' physical bodies would be destroyed, and their remnant divine souls would be able to transform into ghosts. They also had the ability to target the blood fiend race. Chu Zan thought about how the two races he created would fight for fate during calamity. How much benefit would he gain from their achievements? When he thought about this, he became extremely excited. It was time for Buddha Nanwu to return to the demon zone and help demon Buddha promote Buddhism. His grand wish was to convert the demon race into Buddhists. Ren Chongha and Qin Ying waited anxiously. Finally, Chu Zan summoned them. The two of them were pleasantly surprised and soon arrived inside the small courtyard in a low-key manner. Chu Zan was shrouded in a seven-colored radiance. Behind him was the heaven-shaking divine image, and his face could not be seen clearly. Greetings, Master. Ren Chongha and Qin Ying knelt down and kowtowed respectfully. Rise. Yes, Master. Qin Ying wanted to speak a few times, but he did not know how to broach the topic. After all, he was a little embarrassed. He actually wanted to turn back into a man. Chu Zan naturally knew what he was thinking and took the initiative to speak. So what if you are a man in a woman's body? Don't let that become a hindrance to your cultivation. Just cultivate diligently and comprehend the great Tao. When you break through to the Tao realm, you naturally will have a choice. Yes, master. Qin Ying's heart trembled, and he hurriedly bowed. However, he was pondering in his heart, the Tao realm? What realm was that? The realm above the divine realm is the Tao realm, Chu Zan explained. Then, he said, this Tao Yuan is about to end and a great calamity is approaching. The two of you need to cultivate diligently and seize the opportunity to fight for fate in the great Dao Yuan calamity. Those who obtain fate will be able to cultivate at a rapid pace. Reaching the heaven realm in a hundred years would not be a problem for such people. Chu Zan then looked at Ren Chongha and said, You have already cultivated the Yin Yang divine seal and comprehended the Dao of Yin Yang. This calamity may be an opportunity for you. If you obtain great fortune and fate, you can break through to the Dao realm during this calamity. The great Dao Yuan calamity. Ren Chongha and Qin Ying's hearts trembled. Master, how do we fight for fate? Ren Chongha asked. How do we fight? You will sense it innately when the time comes. Just defeat your enemies, the chosen ones, or the bearers of the calamity. Next, Chu Zan explained the great Dao Yuan calamity to them, emphasizing on the matters regarding the blood fiend race. After giving them instructions, Chu Zan provided them with cultivation pills to increase their strength as soon as possible in preparation for the calamity. At the same time, he taught Qin Ying the basic cultivation techniques that his other disciples had already learned. You can join forces with some divine realm experts to prepare to deal with the blood fiends. Pay more attention to the desolate ancient zone. Chu Zan instructed Ren Chongha. Yes, master. 
Ren Chonghe replied respectfully. Chu Zong then looked at Qin Ying and said, I have some relationship with the Luo family. You can return to the eastern region and take control of the Luo family. When you're there, assist your senior sister with some matters. After saying this, he asked Hei Yu to come out and get to know Qin Ying. Seeing Hei Yu, Qin Ying let out a sigh of relief. His guess was right. It seemed that Master was making arrangements for the great Daoyuan calamity. Greetings, senior sister. Junior brother, there's no need to be so polite, Hei Yu said with a smile. The corners of Qin Ying's mouth twitched, junior brother? The expansion of the Black Moon Tower was naturally left to Hei Yu. As her master, Chu Zan naturally would not take charge of such things personally. Both of you should leave a drop of your blood essence with me. I will condense a drop of rebirth blood for you too. Even if they lost in the fight for fate, they would still be reborn. This was also a boon in their fight for fate. Their enemies would definitely be terrified. Ren Chonghe and Qin Ying were shocked. As expected of their master, he was too terrifying. He was able to resurrect them from a drop of blood. In addition, their talent levels would be preserved. It was beyond terrifying and simply unimaginable. Don't let down your guard because of this, though, Chu Zan warned them sternly. Yes, master. Ren Chonghe and Qin Ying's hearts trembled as they hurriedly nodded. Chu Zan waved his hand and gave each of them a Dao artifact. Currently, divine artifacts were useless to him. Dao artifacts were the basics. His Smurf account, Shuai Potion, had scammed many treasures from the Great Dao Communication Group. After sending Ren Chonghe and Qin Ying away, Chu Zan looked at Hei Yu and said, The Great Dao Yuan Calamity will begin in ten years. Black Moon Tower needs to make preparations. You are cultivating the Heavenly Dao Scripture. This Great Calamity is also an opportunity. Make good use of it. Hei Yu understands. Hei Yu's heart trembled. Great Dao Yuan Calamity? May I ask, Master, what is the Great Dao Yuan Calamity? Chu Zan said meaningfully, The Great Dao Yuan Calamity heralds the end of an era. There will be races that strive for fate and rise during the calamity, and there will also be experts who attain the Dao during the calamity. For example, the human race rose during one of the previous Great Dao Yuan Calamities and became the overlord of the Nine Zones. The demon race fell back then too. This great Dao Yuan calamity will bring about more chaos, there will be no next Dao Yuan. Hei Yu's heart shook violently, there would be no next Dao Yuan? The nine zones were going to be completely destroyed? Master. Chu Zan waved his hand and said, This is not something you should know yet. Prepare well for the great Dao Yuan calamity. You are in charge of the Black Moon Tower and come from the ancient human king's family of the central region. You are also the oldest, so teach your fellow disciples well. All you need to do is fight for fate during the great Dao Yuan calamity. I will deal with the rest. Yes, master. We will definitely fight for fate during the calamity and reach a higher realm. Hei Yu bowed and said, Chapter 262, Eastern Zone. After instructing Hei Yu, Chu Zan summoned the Ghost King. It was time for the Ghost Race to make a move. Do you know where the other Netherworld race clans are? I can think of a way to contact them, Ghost King said. The great Dao Yuan calamity is coming. It's time for the ghost race to take advantage of the situation and rise up. The netherworld race should disappear, and the ghost race should bear and inherit the fate of the netherworld race. Yes, ghost ancestor, the ghost king bowed and said. Go. Convert the netherworld race into ghosts. Once the great Dao Yuan calamity arrives, enter it and fight to strengthen the fate of the ghost race, Chu Zan waved his hand and said. The ghost king took the ghost race and left the pocket dimension. Meanwhile, you are continued to stay by Chu Pingfan's side. At present, the ghost race was divided into two groups. One was the original Netherworld race clan converted into ghosts, while the other were the remnant souls converted into ghosts by Yuer. Furthermore, the Heaven Realm ghost race elder was still by Yuer's side. After giving instructions to the ghost king, Chu Zan summoned Buddha Nanwu. You shall enter the demon zone and assist demon Buddha in his efforts to convert demons into Buddhists. Yes, Buddha. Buddha Nanwu said respectfully. Chu Zan once again taught Buddha Nanwu Buddhist Dharma, mainly to deal with the blood fiend race. Buddha Nanwu then left. On this day, Chu Pingfan and you were also bid farewell to Chu Zan and returned to the eastern region. He was in conflict with the Ji family and was prepared to establish a force in the eastern region to oppose the Ji family. The sky shaking golden rock followed Chu Pingfan. Thirteenth uncle, the great Dao calamity is coming. I want to go to the outer zones to fight for fate, Chu Pingfan said. Go. You are on the path of the extreme Dao. In the great Dao calamity, there will be opportunities. Chu Zan nodded. Chu Pingfan wanted to go to the outer zones simply because, 
with Chu Zan in the northern zone, there would not be any trouble. Even the great Daoyuan calamity might not affect anything there. Chu Pingfan and Yu are left. Before leaving the southern region, they also bid farewell to Chu Yun. Hei Yu transferred a portion of the Tower Lords. Among them, were two peak Heaven Realm Tower Lords and the remaining ten Heaven Realm Tower Lords. They were all outstanding and powerful Tower Lords. They could be considered one of the core forces of the Black Moon Tower. They brought a group of the elite forces of the Black Moon Tower and prepared to follow Qin Ying to the Eastern Zone. With the assistance of the Luo family, they would develop and expand the Black Moon Tower. Communication talismans and myriad zone talismans were naturally indispensable. Chu Zan was very confident about Hei Yu's ability, so he did not pay too much attention to this matter. He looked at the laws of heaven and earth in the southern region. At the moment, 80% of the laws had been replaced by the heavenly Tao laws. The final 20% of the laws were the core laws, so they would take more time to replace. However, within a year, the entire southern region would become part of the heavenly Tao. Great Qin Dynasty's royal palace, Qin Ying, Pang Xinghai, Xin Yuangfang, and the other brothers gathered together. Hua Qianzi sat beside him, her eyes filled with sadness and unwillingness. Qin Qian obediently sat on the other side of Qin Ying, just like the obedient little fox from before. In your previous life, you followed me, Qin Ying, without any regrets. Even when you were in danger of dying, you did not retreat and worked tirelessly against Cao Tianyi. In this life, I also have no regrets joining hands with you to fight Cao Tianyi. The friendship of two lifetimes, I, Qin Ying, will never let down my brothers. Pang Xinghai, Xin Yuangfang, Peng Qiguang, Yu Bailong, and Bai Shaokong all avoided his gaze, feeling very sorrowful in their hearts. The magnificent big brother was too charming, he was like a peerless great empress. They were unable to look him in the eye. I'm going back to the eastern zone, Qin Ying sighed and said. Pang Xinghai and the other's expressions changed. Big brother, why are you going back to the eastern zone? Sob, are you going to abandon me? Hua Qianzi sobbed. Listen to me, Qin Ying said seriously, the nine zones are about to face a great calamity. We must be prepared. Brothers, work hard to cultivate and fight for fate in this calamity. I have important matters to attend to when I return to the eastern zone. Now that the southern region has been unified, there will be no trouble in the northern zone. All of you should cultivate well. When the great calamity arrives, we brothers will fight together. Peng Qiguang said in a deep voice, Big brother, what is this great calamity you are talking about? The great Daoyuan calamity. This Daoyuan is about to end, and the great Daoyuan calamity is about to rise. It will be full of danger. If the human race wants to maintain their position as the overlord of the nine zones, they must succeed in the fight for fate in the calamity, Qin Ying said solemnly. Then, he gave a brief introduction about the great Daoyuan calamity. Brothers, work hard. The great calamity is not far away. The grudge between us and scoundrel Cao will definitely be settled during this great calamity. Qin Ying rubbed Qin Qian's head and said, I'll leave the great Qin dynasty to you. With the unification of the southern region and their support, nothing will go wrong. Yes, yes. Don't worry, master. Qin Qian nodded her head obediently. However, in her heart, she thought that it was time to go to Chu Zan's courtyard. Chu Zan's support would be much more reliable than Xin Yuangfang and the others. With their parting imminent, Qin Ying was not stingy. He left behind cultivation resources for his brothers and taught them the tyrant dragon body tempering technique, as well as a few other powerful secret techniques. A portion of the secret techniques came from the Luo family, and a portion was passed down by Chu Zan. Of course, the portion of the secret techniques that Chu Zan passed down was only passed down to Pang Xinghai and the others after obtaining Chu Zan's approval. Qin Ying also told them that they were not allowed to interfere with the matters in Chu County. The day of their parting arrived. Qin Ying and a group of Luo family elders, including some elites from the Black Moon Tower, were gathered in a certain place in the northern zone. Nine Swords Mountain, Floating Flower Pavilion, Yu family, and other forces that supported Qin Ying were all there sending them off. They had already learned about the Great Daoyuan Calamity and had begun to prepare for it. The human race could not lose during this Great Calamity. They definitely could not lose their position as the overlord of the Nine Zones. Hei Yu personally came and handed the Black Moon Tower's development plan to Qin Ying. As the former Great Qin Emperor, his abilities and methods were unquestionable. Moreover, with the Luo family backing him, the Black Moon Tower would be able to develop in the Eastern Zone without any problems. Qin Ying returned to the Eastern Zone. Pang Xinghai, Xin Yuangfang, and the others returned to their respective factions and began to cultivate diligently, preparing for the Great Daoyuan Calamity. 
The northern zone entered a period of relative peace. Cao Tianyi's factions, after paying a price, were finally spared, much to their relief. With the impending Great Daoyuan Calamity, the various factions did not want to start a large-scale conflict. This was the case even for the Great Qian Palace. The news of the Great Daoyuan Calamity had already spread amongst the experts of the northern zone. Qin Ying, who had returned to the eastern zone, had successfully become the Luo family's leader in waiting with Luo Ming's support. He also controlled more than half of the Luo family's power. The Black Moon Tower began to lay out plans in the eastern zone. With the Luo clan supporting them from behind, the use of the communication talisman quickly spread throughout the eastern zone. The Heavenly Dao talisman had already started to control the information flow in the eastern zone, and it was now laying the foundation for the Heavenly Dao laws to devour the eastern zone. After learning about the Great Dao Yuan Calamity, Chu Zan had made arrangements and started to train hard to increase his strength. After all, the foundation of any successful plan was strength. A year passed peacefully. Apart from the Asura ancient land, the southern region was very peaceful and harmonious, and it was all under the Great Qin Dynasty's jurisdiction. It was in a unified state. Chapter 263, Uncle Chu Zan. There were still Emperor Realm experts from the major forces exploring the Asura ancient land. It was worth mentioning that the little evil king and the evil son were still entangled inside the Asura ancient land. The evil son was almost on the verge of collapse thanks to the relentless pursuit of the little evil king. The emperor realm experts of the other forces who passed by would help the little evil king, whether intentionally or not. They would always step in to stop the experts of the great evil palace from interfering. The spirit devouring flower had already broken through to the divine realm after devouring the tainted blood. Now, it was devouring a blood lake. Chu Zan learned from the message sent by the spirit devouring flower that there were living creatures brewing in the blood lake. These should be the beginnings of the blood fiend race. If nothing went wrong, the blood fiend race would emerge from the blood lakes in the Asura ancient land when the calamity arrived. However, now that the blood lakes were being devoured by the spirit devouring flower, it meant that the blood lake in the Asura ancient land would not give birth to blood fiends. Ding Yu and the other disciples had already broken through to the supreme realm in the pocket dimension. Buddha Nanwu had returned to the demon zone to oversee Buddhism. With his arrival, Buddhism ushered in a period of expansion. Many demons converted to Buddhism, especially the low-level demons, who became devout followers of Buddhism. They believed that converting to Buddhism and cultivating Buddhism Dharma was the only chance to change their fate. As Buddhism spread and the strength of Buddhism increased, they were naturally attacked by the demons led by the heavenly demon tribe. A great battle broke out because of this. In the end, the Buddhist sect disciples, who did not fear death, won as they shouted the slogan, Defend Buddhism and ascend to Nirvana. In this battle, Buddha Nanwu did not make a move, but the new heaven realm experts of the Buddhist sect did. After the battle ended, things temporarily returned to a calm state, and the Buddhist sect continued to expand. However, the demon zone was very big, and the Buddhist sect was only spreading in one place, so it did not attract too much attention from the core upper echelons of the heavenly demon tribe. However, the final battle between Buddhism and the demon race would eventually come. Chu Zan looked at the southern region, which was about to fall completely under the influence of the heavenly Tao laws. He would succeed soon. It was only a matter of time. Chu Zan had become the true master behind the scenes of the southern region. With but a thought, he could change the laws of the southern region, change the fate of the southern region, and even the spiritual energy of the southern region. Furthermore, the spatial zones around the southern region came under his control as well. Chu Zan discovered that there were several ancient battlefields in the southern region that had been sealed into spatial zones. These were the battlefields from the era of the Great War and before that in the southern region. Naturally, there were treasures and inheritances within, as well as blood lakes. There were already faint signs of the blood fiend race being born inside. The southern region ancient battlefields could not compare to the battlefield he had seen in the Chaos Dao Mirror's image projection, so there were only signs of the blood fiend race being born. They had not been completely born yet. Records of the blood fiend race had appeared in the Myriad Races Atlas. This meant that the blood fiend race had already appeared. It was just that they had not entered the nine zones yet. They were still in a state of gathering power. Chu Zan already had a plan for the ancient battlefields of the southern region. They were all mystic realms that belonged to the southern region and could be used to nurture the southern region's cultivators. After the laws of heaven and earth in the southern region had been completely replaced, Chu Zan would intervene. All of the cultivators in the southern region would begin to cultivate and comprehend the heavenly Tao laws. As the strength of the cultivators in the southern region increased, the heavenly Tao laws in the southern region would also increase. 
The process should be complete in three days. Chu Zan waited. He had already chosen one of the ancient battlefields to open as a mystic realm. Although several emperor realm cultivators had appeared in the southern region in the past year, their strength was still weak and could not be compared to the cultivators in the other four regions. Moreover, there was not a single heaven realm expert in the southern region. A figure appeared outside the small courtyard. Chin Qian. Come in. Chin Qian heard this and obediently walked in. Qian pays her respects to Uncle Chu Zan. Chin Heian knelt on the ground. The corner of Chu Zan's mouth twitched slightly. This little fox was really smart. She immediately lowered her status and became his junior. Little girl, you managed to pluck up the courage to come to my place. Chu Zan knew very well that Chin Qian was afraid that he would make her a servant girl, so she had always been afraid to come to the small courtyard. After all, an empress would not want to lower herself to become a servant girl. However, after Qin Ying's arrival, she realized how powerful Chu Zan was, so she ran over. She was willing to be a servant girl. Uncle Chu Zan, the strength of the Great Qin Dynasty is too weak, and the strength of the southern region's cultivators is insufficient. What can we do to increase the strength of the southern region? Qin Qian looked at Chu Zan and asked. She understood one thing. In front of an expert like Chu Zan, it was best to get straight to the point. It is indeed a little weak. Chu Zan nodded. The overall strength of the southern region was indeed too weak compared to the other four regions. Qin Qian was secretly delighted. She continued to look at Chu Zan eagerly and said, Uncle Chu Zan, my strength is also too weak. How can I control the great Qin dynasty like this? Relying on external forces is only a short-term solution. Chu Zan smiled. He rubbed her head and said, Little fox, no wonder you came to my place. I'm no longer a fox, Qin Qian muttered. Chu Zan pondered for a moment before saying, All right, I'll teach you some cultivation techniques to increase your strength. The great Qin dynasty had unified the southern region, and he was about to become the master of the heavenly Tao laws of the southern region. As such, the empress of the great Qin dynasty could be considered one of his own people. It was all right to take care of her. In any case, he had too many cultivation techniques and treasures, and no longer had any use for most of them. Furthermore, he was also prepared to disseminate some cultivation techniques to the great Qin dynasty to increase its strength, especially the strength of its cultivators. The fact that the great Qin dynasty had unified the southern region was actually beneficial to Chu Zan. It made it easier for him to carry out certain actions, such as disseminating cultivation techniques to allow cultivators to comprehend the heavenly Tao laws, thus increasing the power and influence of the heavenly Tao laws. Chu Zan passed on some cultivation techniques to Qin Qian, and also prepared a set of cultivation techniques for her to pass to the cultivators of the great Qin dynasty. The southern region was lacking in terms of inheritance. Other than a few major powers, there were almost no cultivation techniques for the emperor realm and above. Furthermore, he directly acted and raised Qin Qian's cultivation level to the first level of the supreme realm. To the current Chu Zan, raising Qin Qian's cultivation level was too easy. Moreover, this increase was not much, and would not cause Qin Qian's foundation to be unstable. Qin Qian was overjoyed, she had come to the right place. With the cultivation technique, her strength had also increased. At the same time, she had the cultivation technique and resources to strengthen the great Qin dynasty's cultivators. Thank you, Uncle Chu Zan. Qin Qian thanked him very obediently and sweetly. Chapter 264. Master of the Heavenly Tao Laws, there will be an ancient battlefield appearing in the southern region. It can be considered a mystic realm. Prepare some candidates and enter when the time comes. There are inheritances and treasures inside. Of course, there will also be certain dangers. I will get someone to give you the token to enter the mystic realm. Chu Zan looked at Qin Qian and continued, Get your people to enter ahead of time to take care of things. This mystic realm will be open to all of the cultivators in the southern region. Your great Qin dynasty will be in charge of this. You can ask Nine Swords Mountain and other factions to help you and prevent chaos. Hearing this, Qin Qian's eyes lit up. Mystic realm? Thank you, Uncle Chu Zan. I'll definitely take care of this. N, go then. Chu Zan nodded and rubbed her head. Yes, Uncle Chu Zan. I'll return and make the arrangements now. Qin Qian left happily. In front of Chu Zan, she played the role of an obedient niece, but after she returned to the royal palace, she assumed her role and persona as the great Shi Empress once again. She began to choose candidates to nurture, while also sending out a recruitment order to recruit all of the southern region's cultivators into the Qin army. She wanted to build a powerful army of cultivators. After passing the assessment and joining the army, these cultivators would be able to obtain advanced cultivation techniques, including emperor-level cultivation techniques and above. 
It was extremely attractive to the cultivators of the southern region. Before this, if the cultivators of the southern region wanted to obtain such high-level cultivation techniques, they would have to join one of the major forces. Unfortunately, these few major forces would usually not accept them. Most of these cultivators were not considered talents, and also did not meet their age requirements. Now that the great Qin dynasty had sent out a recruitment order with such cultivation techniques as bait, naturally, countless martial artists came to participate in the assessment. Qin Qian also planned to build her own force. Naturally, her first choice was to choose from the Qin, He, and Zhao families. Chu Zan had told her that cultivating the cultivation technique he gave her would allow them to increase their cultivation speed rapidly. With a powerful army and powerful experts, the great Qin dynasty could truly be considered the only empire in the southern region. It would truly rule the southern region and stand on equal footing with the other four regions. Qin Qian was quite ambitious, she wanted to become the second great Qin emperor, Empress. All of the changes in the southern region could not be hidden from Chu Zan. Finally, the laws of heaven and earth of the southern region were completely devoured by the heavenly Tao laws. At that moment, Chu Zan had truly become the master of the southern region. The moment the southern region fell under the influence of the heavenly Tao laws, Chu Zan gained some new insights. A power that ruled over all living things appeared in his heart. With a single thought, he could change the fate of any living creature in the southern region. You remained in seclusion, but became the master of the heavenly Tao laws of the southern region and now reign supreme in the southern region. You have been rewarded with a cultivation level increase. The system's reward had arrived. Furthermore, the reward this time was actually a cultivation level increase. Which meant that he had directly broken through to the next level of the Tao realm. It was a pleasant surprise. Chu Zan was extremely excited. The southern region was now under the control of the heavenly Tao laws, and his Tao realm cultivation had increased by a whole level. If he succeeded in repeating this feat in the other four regions, would the system's reward be the same? He had finally found a way to break through quickly. Chu Zan did not immediately accept the reward. Instead, he carefully studied the changes brought about by the southern region's heavenly Tao laws. He was the master of the heavenly Tao laws of the southern region, which gave him special insights and power. The ruler. The ruler of all living things. At this moment, Chu Zan gained even more insights. A Tao principle was formed from his enlightenment. The control Tao principle. Although the control Tao principle could not control everything, it was still extremely powerful. For example, it could control the growth and decline of something, control the power of an enemy, control the body of an enemy, and so on. Of course, he could not control an existence that was stronger than himself. Even so, this Tao principle was still a powerful one. The Tao principle fused with the chaotic energy and merged with the other Tao principles. The miniature version of the great Tao grew a bit. The moment he became the master of the southern region's heavenly Tao laws, Chu Zan tried to alter the laws to increase the probability of a cultivator comprehending the heavenly Tao. The great Tao Yuan calamity was coming, so how could he allow the great Tao to limit cultivators? Now, everything would depend on talent and comprehension. If one comprehended the heavenly Tao, their cultivation levels would increase explosively. There would be no limit. The stronger the living beings under the heavenly Tao were, the stronger the heavenly Tao would be, and the more perfect it would be. Therefore, he removed the limits that hindered their speed of cultivation. The cultivators of the southern region were on the weaker side overall. Once their cultivation speed increased explosively, those with high comprehension ability might even enter a state of enlightenment. In the future, the cultivation would depend on one's talent and comprehension ability. Of course, they could not lack willpower. Even if they were a piece of trash, as long as they had strong willpower and tenacity, they would be able to break through their limits and obtain the favor of the heavenly Tao. Then, they would be able to forge their own path to the heavens. As Chu Zan changed the laws of the southern region, he sighed. He was truly the savior of trash. Where there's a will, there's a way. Those who put in effort will be rewarded by the heavenly Tao. After changing the rules, Chu Zan discovered that the cultivation speed in the southern region had increased. However, the southern region was still too small, and the power of the laws was limited. Moreover, it was affected by the laws of heaven and earth of the other four regions. It did not reach his desired result. The heavenly Tao laws were still lacking strength. Chu Zan thought that he should do something to help the southern region's heavenly Tao laws. How should he do it? Should he get a divine realm expert to help? Should he provide the southern region's cultivators with enlightenment and assistance in cultivation? Chapter 265. Epiphanies are the way. Thinking this, Chu Zan glanced at a place outside the Asura ancient land where a divine realm expert was hiding. 
His cultivation level was around the second level of the divine realm, and he belonged to the great evil palace. However, it was not the evil son's real body. All of the divine realm experts had left the southern region, yet this one was hiding outside the Asura ancient land. Was he here to pick up the evil son? Although the fight for the fate treasures had come to an end, this divine realm expert still did not dare to enter the Asura ancient land for fear of offending that unknown existence. Chu Zan found it a little difficult to make a move. This divine realm expert did not violate his rules and did not offend him, so there was no reason for Chu Zan to make a move and sacrifice him for the sake of dispersing his comprehension to the cultivators of the southern region. That would be a little ruthless, and perhaps a little evil, even if this divine realm expert was probably not innocent himself. Chu Zan decided to wait a little longer. If there were really no divine realm experts to use, he could use some heavenly treasures to help the southern region's cultivators instead. However, it would not be as effective. After all, during cultivation, one required comprehension alongside sufficient spiritual power. If the comprehension of a divine realm expert was dispersed, that would be far more effective. Chu Zan received the reward. His Tao realm cultivation advanced by a whole level, and Chu Zan entered a state of epiphany. The Tao principles in his body circulated, and some of the chaotic energy was consumed. The miniature version of the great Tao was also slightly strengthened. The third level of the Tao realm, in addition, he comprehended a new Tao principle. The Illusion Tao Principle. The Tao realm had 36 levels, and during this brief period of time, Chu Zan had broken through from the first level of the Tao realm to the third level of the Tao realm. This cultivation speed could be said to be unprecedented. The heavenly Tao laws of the southern region were slowly beginning to spread beyond its borders. Chu Zan had set a small goal for himself. Within ten years, before the great Tao Yuan calamity began, he would have the heavenly Tao laws cover the northern zone. The heavenly Tao talisman had merged with the five fate treasures of the northern zone, which would help it to achieve this. Chu Zan first used the heavenly Tao laws to take care of the Black Moon Tower in the southern region, people like Bao Hongyan. The power of the heavenly Tao laws descended and raised her cultivation to the fifth level of the emperor realm. She was able to raise her cultivation by several levels without any trouble, which was a gift from the master of the heavenly Tao laws. However, this required the consumption of the power of the heavenly Tao laws, so it could not be used on a large scale. Otherwise, it would easily lead to disorder within the heavenly Tao laws. Since they were laws, they naturally had to operate according to certain principles. Moreover, Chu Zan could directly transmit his voice to any living beings in the southern region through the heavenly Tao laws. Somewhere in the southern region, a middle-aged man was sitting cross-legged with a struggling expression on his face. He was the first cultivator to break through to the emperor realm after the laws of heaven and earth of the southern region were restored. Naturally, this had been due to a certain amount of luck. However, due to his background and lack of a cultivation technique, he felt lost. He was making a difficult choice whether to join the forces of the outer regions or enter service under the great Qin dynasty. The treatment of the outer regions forces seemed to be very good. Currently, the great Qin dynasty could not be compared to the major forces of the outer regions. However, he was still a native of the southern region, and still had feelings for his homeland. At this moment, he suddenly realized that his comprehension of the laws had instantly increased. His cultivation, which was originally stuck at the first level of the emperor realm, had suddenly broken through to the second level of the emperor realm. What a great opportunity! The man was extremely surprised. Suddenly, a voice seemed to echo in his heart, telling him that his opportunity lay within the great Qin dynasty. Upon entering service there, he would be able to obtain a cultivation technique, and his cultivation level would rise rapidly. Without any hesitation, the man heeded the voice. The southern region's cultivators suddenly realized that their cultivation seemed to have become much easier recently. The bottlenecks that they had been stuck at for a long time had suddenly disappeared. What a pleasant surprise! When the news spread, countless cultivators believed that the laws of the southern region had been restored, which heralded the arrival of fortune. On this day, there was news that a mystic realm was about to open in the southern region. The great Qin dynasty's cultivators had already obtained an advantage, and were the first to enter the mystic realm. The mystic realm would open in half a month. The great Qin dynasty issued a decree that no one was allowed to enter the mystic realm without permission, no one was allowed to kill or steal treasures, and no one was allowed to deplete the strength of the southern region. Moreover, there were emperor realm experts standing guard there. It was even rumored that the great Qin dynasty had received the approval of the southern region's laws of heaven and earth. Not long after, another rumor spread that the southern region's laws of heaven and earth were now called the heavenly Tao laws. Everyone cultivated to comprehend the heavenly Tao laws, and if they were enlightened, 
there was a chance that they would receive a blessing from the heavenly Tao, which would cause their cultivation levels to soar. The news came from the Black Moon Tower, which was known for its authenticity. Soon after, it was said that a heavens blessed from a certain family had an epiphany and directly broke through from the unity realm to the truth realm. It was also said that the path to the emperor realm was smooth and, within ten years, he would definitely reach the emperor realm. Occasionally, news of such an epiphany spread, causing a cultivation craze in the southern region. Countless warriors wanted to have an epiphany to become stronger. There was also news that a small sect was facing a crisis. At a critical moment, its sect leader suddenly had an epiphany, and his cultivation level soared, surpassing that of his enemies in one fell swoop. Not only did he save the sect from its crisis, he even eliminated the enemies. And epiphany could solve crises, it could cause one's cultivation level to soar. However, how could one have an epiphany? Comprehension was dependent on talent, and also on luck. Even if one had outstanding talent, they might not be able to experience an epiphany. And epiphany was something that could only be obtained by chance, it was a great opportunity. Not long after, another piece of hot news spread. A certain piece of trash was constantly being bullied, but in the end, after exhibiting unyielding and astonishing willpower, he experienced an epiphany, causing his cultivation level soared by two whole realms. He directly crushed the heavens blessed who were bullying him. He became one of the most sought after heavens blessed. When this news spread, countless people saw hope, and their willpower and desire to cultivate became even firmer. Epiphanies were the path for pieces of trash like them to rise up. The cultivators of the other four regions were all dumbfounded. What was going on in the southern region? How could it be so easy to cultivate? The laws of heaven and earth in the southern region had become the heavenly Tao laws? Were the laws different, or was it just a simple name change? It could not be different, right? Were the laws of heaven and earth in the northern zone not all the same? In fact, were the laws of heaven and earth in the nine zones not all the same? How could the southern region be special? It had to be because the laws of heaven and earth in the southern region had been restored, which was why there was such a phenomenon. That was why it was so easy to cultivate, it had to be. In that case, it would soon return to normal. Chapter 266, The Flourishing Southern Region The southern region entered a cultivation craze. Everyone wanted to have an epiphany. Everyone knew that an epiphany was a great opportunity. It was a chance for pieces of trash to rise up, it was a way to resolve a crisis. For example, a certain guy who was being chased by someone had an epiphany and then turned around and killed his enemy. Along with the opening of the mystic realm in the southern region and the spread of emperor-level cultivation methods and above by the great Qin dynasty, the strength of the southern region's cultivators was rapidly increasing. Not long after, the Black Moon Tower introduced a series of secret manuals. How to increase the probability of an epiphany on the importance of epiphanies, close contact with the heavenly Tao laws, the master of the heavenly Tao laws loves the common people, the master of the heavenly Tao laws. Every secret manual had a special mark that was unique and could not be duplicated. It was said that as long as one read the secret manuals frequently, one's comprehension ability could be increased, and the probability of experiencing an epiphany increased. Although the names of the secret manuals looked a little strange, one had to admit that they were indeed tempting. It was just that they were too damn expensive. An emperor realm warrior from an outer region gritted his teeth and took out 100,000 spiritual crystals to buy a book called, Close Contact with the Heavenly Tao Laws. After reading it, he actually gained new cultivation insights. After experiencing an epiphany and receiving the Heavenly Tao's blessing, his cultivation increased by one level. After the news spread out, the emperor realm cultivators went crazy. Some even bought a complete set of the secret manuals. The southern region was flourishing, and everyone's passion for cultivation had reached its peak. The cultivators from the other regions initially thought that things would return to normal after a certain period of time. In the end, news items came one after another about the southern region's cultivators experiencing epiphanies and having their cultivation levels increased. What was even more ridiculous was the story that an itinerant cultivator who was being hunted had fled to the southern region. There, he gritted his teeth and bought a copy of the Master of the Heavenly Tao Laws from the Black Moon Tower. After reading it, his blood boiled, and he became fanatically in love with the heavenly Tao laws. His comprehension surged like the rising tide, and he experienced an epiphany and broke through to the supreme realm. He then turned around and killed his enemy who was chasing him. After the news spread, the cultivators from the other four regions were unable to restrain themselves and rushed to the southern region one after another. Although it seemed like there was news of epiphanies everywhere, there were not many people who actually experienced an epiphany. The chances were very low. After all, it was also based on talent and comprehension. 
The few books that Chu Zan wrote explained the heavenly Tao laws. It could indeed increase the efficiency of comprehension, allowing cultivators who read the secret manuals to increase their comprehension and improve the understanding of the heavenly Tao laws. In just three months, the southern region's heavenly Tao had grown by more than 10%. The speed at which it was expanding into the other four regions was getting faster and faster. The cultivators from the other four regions poured into the southern region to cultivate and comprehend the heavenly Tao laws, which in turn strengthened the heavenly Tao laws themselves. Crucially, they also weakened the rules of the heaven and earth of the other four regions. However, Chu Zan also had checks and balances. He would not allow a large number of cultivators from the other regions to pour in. Otherwise, the cultivators of the southern region would be impacted, and the great Qin dynasty might not be able to maintain order. He did not want to interfere with the situation in the southern region unless it was necessary. The experts from the northern zone were all puzzled by the changes in the southern region, but they all mistakenly thought all these changes were brought about by the restoration of the laws of the southern region, as well as the impending Great Daoyuan Calamity. Pang Xinghai, Xin Yuangfeng, and the others were all cultivating diligently in the southern region. They realized that cultivating in the southern region was indeed faster and easier. Their comprehension of cultivation techniques was also deeper and more profound. Inside the Asura ancient land, the evil son had just finished his battle with the little evil king. At this moment, his eyes were bloodshot and his killing intent was boiling over. He wanted nothing more than to cut the little evil king into a thousand pieces. He was about to be driven mad by the little evil king. However, the little evil king was extremely powerful and his techniques were extremely strange. His movement technique made it almost impossible for him to tell real from fake. The needles were even more terrifying. The most serious injury he had suffered was when he had been prepared to exchange blows for a chance to kill the little evil king. Although he indeed managed to injure the latter, he was also turned into a hedgehog. Since the evil son was a reincarnation of a divine realm soul, he naturally had certain trump cards. Otherwise, how would he have the confidence to fight for the fate treasures? Unfortunately, the little evil king also had his own. The evil son's soul attacks were useless against the little evil king. The little evil king actually had a divine weapon. Moreover, he could use part of its power. This was a powerful trump card. Therefore, the evil son could not do anything to him at all. Thanks to being stuck in an endless battle against the little evil king, not only did the evil son not get to participate in the fight for the fate treasures, he did not even get any other treasures. He was furious. This could not continue. He had to leave the Asura ancient land. Even if he had to pay a price, he had to leave the Asura ancient land. As long as he did, he had the confidence to kill the little evil king and remove this thorn from his side. The divine realm expert from the great evil palace was still waiting for him outside. That divine realm expert was the second most powerful expert in the great evil palace after his original body. The evil sun flew out of the Asura ancient land, whoosh. With a flash, the little evil king appeared behind him, exuding devilish charm. His fingers were holding onto thin needles, and his posture was somewhat enchanting. The evil son's face was gloomy as he rushed out. In his eyes, the little evil king was just a guy with an abnormal brain. He was neither a man nor a woman. Where are you going? The little evil king left behind a series of afterimages, and countless needles flew toward the evil son. This time, the evil son only defended himself. He had no intention of stopping and kept running out of the Asura ancient land. As long as he paid the price to escape, the little evil king could not stop him. He could only keep attacking and trying to injure the evil son enough so that there was an opportunity to kill him. After running and fighting for half a month, the evil son finally rushed out of the Asura ancient land. Don't run. The little evil king chased after him. The evil son was covered in blood. He did not know how many needles had pierced his body, nor how many times he had been cut by that dagger. His killing intent distorted his face. He quickly fled from the Asura ancient land. Only after he had fled a thousand miles away did he utter coldly, kill him. An aura appeared in the distance, and a finger pointed toward the little evil king. The great evil palace's divine realm expert. Little Xie King's expression changed drastically, and he tried to escape. However, his body was unable to move at all. The difference in strength was too great. The spiritual power in his entire body boiled over as the little evil king tried to escape the shackles with all his might. However, no matter how much he struggled, it was useless. His eyes were blood red and filled with unwillingness. The last thing that appeared in his mind was not the figure of the evil king, nor his hatred for the evil son, but that beautiful figure. Darling, I can't protect you anymore. The speed of that finger was not fast, 
as if it was deliberately trying to make the little evil king feel despair. The evil son did not stop and kept running. The heaven realm experts of the great evil palace protected him, leaving the southern region, leaving the northern zone, and returning to the great evil palace in the chaos zone. Just as the little evil king was about to fall into despair, lightning descended from the sky and transformed into chains, it was as if heaven's punishment had descended. Chapter 267 Soaring Flood Dragon King The southern region's cultivators were very satisfied with their cultivation speed, which was more than three times faster than before. Moreover, the path to the emperor realm was now open. They were full of hope and motivation when cultivating. They were constantly comprehending the heavenly Tao laws and were grateful for its blessings. However, Chu Zan was a little distressed. The rate of improvement of the southern region's cultivators was still too slow for his liking. This was especially true when it came to the comprehension required to break through to the emperor realm. The cultivators still lacked this. As such, they could not break through to the emperor realm quickly, and there was no way to produce a batch of emperor realm cultivators within a short period of time. He could not help but turn his gaze to the divine realm expert from the great evil palace. Should he make a move and sacrifice him for the betterment of the heavenly Tao laws and the cultivation of the southern region's cultivators? However, although the other party was an evil cultivator, he had not offended Chu Zan in the end. It would not be too good to make a move just like that. Chu Zan sighed. His heart was still too soft. He was too particular about not offending others if they did not offend him. Unexpectedly, when the little evil king rushed out of the Asura ancient land to chase the evil son, that divine realm expert made a move against the little evil king. This was a challenge to his authority. No matter what, the little evil king had obtained the opportunity to rise up in the lucky mystic realm that he had set up, and could be considered a member of his own sect. For this reason, he had even severed his third leg. If he was bullied by this divine realm expert and killed right in front of him, he would lose all dignity. Chu Zan's heart was filled with joy, he finally had an excuse to act. With a single thought, the heavenly Daolas turned into lightning chains and descended. Since the other party wanted to make the little evil king feel despair, then he, the master of the heavenly Tao, would make the other party feel despair as well. The eyes of the divine realm expert from the great evil palace were filled with shock. He realized that he was imprisoned by a power of the laws, and he could not escape or move at all. His divine power continued to erupt, but he was still unable to break free from the imprisonment. How was this possible? He was a divine realm expert. He had already half a foot out of the laws of heaven and earth, yet he was actually still restricted by the laws of heaven and earth? Furthermore, the power of the laws of heaven and earth in the southern region was weak to begin with, so it should have been impossible for them to restrict him. What exactly was going on? Then, he realized that the laws of heaven and earth that were restricting him were somewhat different from the laws of heaven and earth that he had comprehended. However, the lightning chains were deadly, and he did not have time to think about it. He had to escape. Boom! A stream of blood red light surged out from his body. He struggled continuously, but he was unable to move at all. The lightning chains emitted sizzling sounds and continued to melt his body. The evil son's gaze was filled with shock. Was this heaven's punishment? How could heaven's punishment target those in the divine realm? Moreover, even if it was heaven's punishment, it should not be able to cause much damage to a divine realm expert. The reason why divine realm cultivators were so powerful was because they had almost transcended the laws of heaven and earth. The reason why the laws of heaven and earth in the southern region were broken apart was not only because of the great battle between Sao Tieni and Mo Hongliu with that divine realm expert from the earth spirit race back then. From this, it could be seen that the divine realm was no longer bound by the laws of heaven and earth. However, the scene in front of him had subverted the evil son's understanding of this principle. Could it be that the laws of heaven and earth had changed? His heart trembled. Under the protection of the heaven realm experts, he quickly left. That divine realm expert had to pray for his own good fortune. The evil son did not have the ability to save him. His original body would not make it in time, nor would he risk it doing so. Boom. The commotion was too big. The nearby cultivators looked over one after another. When they saw the lightning chains descend from the sky, all of them were shocked. It was too terrifying. The person who was covered by the lightning chains was a divine realm expert. Was this the might of the heavenly Tao? The little evil king quickly retreated, afraid of being caught up in it. He was very glad. Were it not for the heavenly punishment, he would have died. Under the shocked eyes of the onlookers, the lightning chains confined the divine realm expert of the great evil palace. Then, the lightning chains flew up and disappeared into the sky in the blink of an eye, together with that divine realm expert. Chu Zan stretched out his hand and tapped the heavenly Tao talisman. 
he began to draw the power and comprehension of the divine realm expert and dispersed it all over the southern region. The cultivators of the southern region suddenly found that their cultivation speed had increased sharply again, especially those who were stuck at the peak of the truth realm. When they started to cultivate again, they found that many insights had surfaced in their minds. It seemed that some powerful expert's comprehension was guiding them. The news gradually spread, and countless cultivators of the southern region were excited. Then, someone led the crowd in placing an incense burner to worship the heavenly Daolaws, thanking the heavenly Daolaws for its blessings. It was rumored that if one sincerely worshipped the heavenly Daolaws, there was a chance of obtaining the heavenly Dao's blessing. Feeling the rapid strengthening of the heavenly Dao laws and the acceleration of its expansion into the other four regions, Chu Zan was overjoyed. That divine realm expert from the great evil palace was really a good person. He had sacrificed himself for the southern region, it was very touching. Chu Zan sat on a chair and leisurely sipped his tea, he then took out Chaos Dao Mirror. There were two new members in the great Dao communication group, however, there was still no increase in the number of Dao Yuan realm experts. From this, it could be seen that there were very few Dao Yuan realm experts. Chu Zan even suspected that the Dao Yuan realm experts of the last Great Dao era had already perished in the Great Dao Calamity. Otherwise, why were there so few of them? His Smurf account, Shuai Potion, had been very active at the beginning, but now, it was slowly becoming less active. After all, he had already found answers to most of the questions he had. However, he still came out occasionally to liven up the group and stir things up. For example, to stimulate the troll Mo 2. The origin Dao crystal still showed no signs of upgrading. It would still take quite some time for him to be able to travel to the Great Dao through the origin Dao crystal. He injected his spiritual power into the Chaos Dao mirror to search for Dao realm experts. The needle turned, and suddenly stopped, an image projection appeared. In the image projection, an Azure Flood Dragon was coiled up in the clouds, eyes shut as if it was sleeping. Azure Flood Dragon. Chu Zan was startled. The Azure Flood Dragon was one of the current overlords of the monster race, and it had also become a royal tribe of the monster race. After all, the Azure Flood Dragon tribe had a trace of dragon bloodline. This once dominant tribe of the monster race had already disappeared at the end of the Eighth Great Dao era. Now, the Azure Flood Dragon tribe and the Heavenly Tiger tribe had become one of the overlords of the monster race. Among them, the Azure Flood Dragon tribe was the most powerful, and they had always been considered royalty among the monster race. The Azure Flood Dragon in the image projection was coiled up in the clouds. As it breathed, it exhaled surges of Dao Aura. Dao Yuan Realm. He had finally found another Dao Yuan Realm expert. And it was from the monster race. As such, the group would finally have Dao Yuan Realm representatives from the three overlords of the nine zones, human, demon, and monster. On the Chaos Dao mirror, the information of the other party was displayed. Soaring Flood Dragon King, Dao Yuan Realm from the monster race, Azure Flood Dragon Tribe. Chu Zan directly moved him into the Great Dao Communication Group, but did not greet the Soaring Flood Dragon King. Only in this way could he show how powerful he was. He had to make these Dao Yuan Realm experts believe that he was more powerful than them, and that he was a super big shot. Chapter 268. Prepare for the Great Calamity When Chu Zan moved the Soaring Flood Dragon King into the Great Dao Communication Group, the Soaring Flood Dragon King's eyes suddenly opened and his aura erupted. Who? The Soaring Flood Dragon King was shocked. Someone had actually absorbed a wisp of his aura and connected him to a mysterious object. This person was definitely much stronger than him. Was there actually such a terrifying expert in this world? Chu Zong then introduced the Soaring Flood Dragon King in the group chat. Welcome fellow Taoist Soaring Flood Dragon King. Being able to join this group is fate. Mo Tu was the first to appear. A, hey, it's that shameless green snake? After he overcame his initial shock, the Soaring Flood Dragon King quickly gained an understanding of what this group chat was about. Then, he saw an acquaintance appear. Mo Tu, he was furious. B asterisk starred Mo Tu, are you insulting me? Yes I am, you shameless snake. B asterisk starred Mo Tu, are you looking to be beaten up? You are reading on our content copy site. Please copy and search this link, web links, to support us. The moment the Soaring Flood Dragon King entered the group, he started arguing with Mo Tu. Sure enough, Mo Tu was a troll. Fellow Taoist Soaring Flood Dragon King, there's no need to bother with Mo Tu. Ruoxian appeared. She disliked Mo Tu the most. The moment she opened her mouth, he would insult her. It was simply hateful. Ruoxian, that little girl? Ruoxian's face instantly turned black. This Flood Dragon was also detestable. 
Hong Yuanchu is also present. Huh. This is surprising. The soaring flood dragon king clicked his tongue in wonder. Then, he saw Xu Yang. Isn't this Xu Yang, that little trash? He's indeed useless, he still hasn't opened his Tao path yet. Hash percent percent. Xu Yang cursed loudly. In the entire group, he was the one who was the most hurt. He was from the same generation as Hong Yuanchu, but was the only one among them who had not opened his Tao path. The soaring flood dragon king was very wary of Chu Zan, the group leader. After a simple greeting, he started arguing with Mo Tu. From time to time, he even mocked Xu Yang. This angered Xu Yang so much that he joined in the fight. Immediately, the three people in the group started to argue with each other. It was a lively scene. The other Tao realm cultivators did not dare to say anything. If the big shots were arguing, they would just watch the show. They did not dare to interrupt rashly. Then, Huang Long appeared. Azure Flood Dragon. It seems like you have some connection with me. I am the Jade Time Dragon. Chu Zan suddenly recalled something when he heard Huang Long's words. There were dragons in the Nine Zones. Was Huang Long not one of them? A Jade Time Dragon was also a dragon. The only difference was that it might be different from other dragons. After all, it was a creature of the Great Tao. Moreover, it was the only one of its kind. Was that why it was not considered a member of the Dragon Tribe? The Azure Dragon Tribe has a trace of the Dragon Race's bloodline. Fellow Taoist Huang Long, although you're a creature of the Great Tao, you're still considered a dragon. To be exact, you're considered an ancestor of the Azure Dragon Tribe. The moment Chu Zan opened his mouth, Hong Yuanchu asked curiously, Fellow Taoist Chu, what tribe is the Dragon Tribe? Why haven't I heard of it before? The Dragon Tribe had disappeared from the Nine Zones during the last Great Tao era, so it was natural that Hong Yuanchu did not know about it. Even the legends about the Dragon Tribe no longer existed in the Nine Zones of the current Great Tao era. Even the monster race probably did not have such records or memories. Even if the Azure Dragon Tribe had a trace of the Dragon Tribe's bloodline, they probably were unaware of the Dragon Tribe. As expected, the Soaring Flood Dragon King said angrily, Our Azure Dragon Tribe was born noble. How could we have a trace of the Dragon Tribe's bloodline? I've never even heard of that Dragon Tribe, let alone that our ancestral bloodline is part of theirs. If he admitted this, would he not be forced to lower his head to Huang Long? The Dragon Tribe disappeared from the Nine Zones during the last Great Tao era. You naturally wouldn't know of them. Chu Zan was not angry at him, and simply explained the matter. He wanted to show that he was a super big shot. Then, he said, fellow Taoist Soaring Flood Dragon King, if you can purify the dragon bloodline in your body, or stimulate it to mutate, and transform into a dragon, your strength will increase significantly. Fellow Taoist Chu, what was the last great Tao era? Hong Yuanchu grasped the key point. This could be a big secret. His guess was indeed correct. Fellow Taoist Chu was an ancient existence. Out of curiosity about the previous Great Tao era, the Soaring Flood Dragon King did not refute Chu Zan's words immediately. Instead, he waited quietly for the answer. Chu Zan did not answer directly. Instead, he asked, Fellow Taoists, do you know which Tao Yuan it is now? Hong Yuanchu and the others were stunned. They had been around for nearly two Tao Yuan, but they had never thought about which Tao Yuan it was now. Please enlighten us, Taoist brother Chu, Hong Yuanchu said respectfully. Chu Zan still did not answer directly. Instead, he said, the great Tao Yuan calamity is just a small calamity. Fellow Taoists, there is no need to pay too much attention to it. However, be prepared for the great calamity that follows. Hong Yuanchu and the others were shocked. There was another great calamity? One that could threaten Tao Yuan realm experts? Fellow Taoist Chu, do we Tao Yuan realm cultivators also have to face this great calamity? The time is not right yet. Fellow Taoists, just make some preparations. After saying that, Chu Zan slipped away. Guess. Try your best to guess. These Tao Yuan realm experts would definitely be shaken and no longer pay attention to the great Tao Yuan calamity. Hong Yuanchu and the others' hearts trembled. Could it be that Tao Yuan realm cultivators would also face a great calamity? A great calamity that was capable of threatening Tao Yuan realm cultivators. What kind of great calamity would that be? They felt a little downcast. They had already opened their Tao paths, yet were still not immortal? They did not doubt Chu Zan's words. After all, in their hearts, Chu Zan was an ancient existence. He had opened his Tao path much earlier than they had. Huang Long muttered in his heart, the great calamity that fellow Taoist Chu mentioned should be the great Tao calamity, right? With that thought in mind, Huang Long came out to speak. Of course, he did not tell Hong Yuanchu and the others. Instead, he said, the great calamity has yet to arrive, 
and the time has yet to come. Fellow Taoists, there's no need to panic. It would be strange if there was no need to panic. A senior had suddenly told them out of nowhere that a great calamity was coming, but they knew nothing about this great calamity. Fellow Taoist Huang Long, can you tell me a thing or two? Soaring Flood Dragon King hurriedly asked. I'm a dragon, which makes me one of your ancestors. What should you call me? Huang Long thought of what Chu Zan said, so it turned out that he was an ancestor of the Azure Dragon tribe. In that case, how could Soaring Flood Dragon King call him fellow Taoist? That's right, shameless snake. How could you call Huang Long fellow Taoist? You're too disrespectful. Mo Tu was the first to come out to support Huang Long. Hong Yuanchu and the others also spoke up one after another. They wanted the Soaring Floor Dragon King to acknowledge Huang Long as his ancestor. In order to obtain news of the Great Calamity, Hong Yuanchu's side and Mo Tu were united for the first time. In any case, they were not the ones having to recognize Huang Long as their ancestor. Soaring Flood Dragon King's face turned dark as he went silent. Wanting me to lower my status? In your dreams? Forget it, the Great Calamity hasn't arrived yet anyway, so it won't affect me for the time being. Then he slipped away. In the Great Dao, Huang Long was rolling around, extremely happy. Hong Yuanchu, Mo Tu, and the others all started to criticize the Soaring Flood Dragon King, calling him unloyal and stupid. After acknowledging Huang Long as his ancestor, would it not be easy to transcend the calamity? What was there to be afraid of? Soaring Flood Dragon King went mad and immediately started to argue with Hong Yuanchu and the others in the group chat. He could not win alone, so he called Hu Tai over. As a member of the monster race, how could he not help a monster race elder like him? Following that, Mo Tu called out the others as well. Hong Yuanchu and the others also called out the others, causing chaos in the group chat. Chu Zan felt comfortable watching this. They should continue to argue as much as they could. The more they argued, the faster the origin Dao crystal would transform and upgrade. Chapter 269. Changes a year had passed since Chu Zan had announced the existence of the Great Calamity in the group chat. The group had become much livelier this year, especially when Huang Long had appeared. Hong Yuanshu and the others had become much more active. They had wanted to hear news of the Great Calamity from him. Ever since they learned that Dao Yuan realm cultivators would also undergo the Calamity, they had been unable to live in peace. They had to consider how they should transcend the Calamity. However, they knew nothing about the Great Calamity. They did not know where or how to begin their preparations. Chu Zan appeared in the group a few times, but he still maintained his previous stance. He said that it was not the time yet, so there was no need to panic. The more he said that there was no need to panic, the more Hong Yuanshu and the others could not remain calm. The alternate account of Shuai Potion said in the group, I asked the elders, and they said that the Great Calamity was so terrifying that even Dao Yuan realm experts would fall. This scared Hong Yuanchu and the others even more. Shuai Potion declined their requests for him to ask the elders about the Great Calamity, saying that the elders did not want to elaborate. The Dao realm cultivators were also panicking. F asterisk CK. There was actually a Great Calamity where even Dao Yuan realm cultivators would die. What kind of terrifying Great Calamity was that? Of course, there were also people who were not worried at all. For example, Ying Kong said, the Great Calamity should only affect the Dao Yuan realm seniors, it should have nothing to do with us. After all, the Dao Yuan realm is too far away from us. When he said that, the other Dao realm cultivators nodded their heads. If they knew that the Great Dao Calamity affected them as well, they would not be able to remain calm. Dear readers, you were reading on our content copy site. Please copy and search this link, web links, to support us. The Dao Yuan realm cultivators' hearts were in a mess. They were probably secretly looking for information about the Great Calamity, especially from the other Dao Yuan realm cultivators. Once the news of the Great Calamity spread, how could these Dao Yuan realm experts still be in the mood to pay attention to the Nine Zones in the Great Dao Yuan Calamity? This was exactly what Xu Zan wanted. Although Dao Yuan realm experts would not interfere with the Great Dao Yuan Calamity, nothing was absolute. They might not personally intervene, but could use other methods. For example, creating a clone or something similar. Chu Zan did not want the Dao Yuan realm experts to interfere and affect his plans for the Nine Zones. Within a year, the overall strength of the southern region had risen rapidly. The heavenly Dao laws were also strengthened by about 50%. Half of the laws of heaven and earth of the western region had been replaced. One third of the laws of heaven and earth of the eastern region had been replaced. The speed of its expansion continued to rise. The mystic realm in the southern region was opened. Inheritances and treasures appeared one after another. The strength of the southern region's cultivators rose rapidly. 
their emperor realm cultivators were not much weaker than those from the other regions. However, the gap between them when it came to top experts was still huge. The military might of the great Qin dynasty was also rapidly increasing thanks to Chu Zan's help. They had already formed three cultivator armies. For this reason, Qin Qian asked Chu Zan for army formations to use. The Chu family was also developing rapidly. It was worth mentioning that this old man, Chu Tianming, had already broken through to the emperor realm with Chu Zan's help. During the month after he had just broken through to the emperor realm, he would often be heard laughing wildly in his ancestral residence. I, Chu Tianming, really have the bearing of an emperor realm expert. Chu Zan shook his head. This old man's world was too small. The emperor realm was just the beginning. After breaking through to the emperor realm, Chu Tianming was exceptionally happy. He then remembered that he had sent Chu Zan to the small courtyard. Previously, when Chu Zan had refused to go back to the ancestral residence, he had been furious. Now that he had broken through to the emperor realm, he was in a great mood. He thought of his missing third son, so he personally came to the small courtyard and asked Chu Zan to go back to the ancestral residence. Of course, it was impossible for Chu Zan to go back to the ancestral residence, so he was rejected outright. Chu Tianming was so angry that he blew his top and glared at Chu Zan. He raised his hand several times, wanting to beat him up, but he could not bear to do it in the end. After the old man returned to the ancestral residence, Chu Zan heard his roars that he had not heard for a long time. B asterisk starred. What a B asterisk starred, he has no respect for his grandfather. I asked him to reflect on himself in the small courtyard, and this is the result? Arg, I'm so angry. If that's what you want, then stay in the courtyard for the rest of your life. The roars spread throughout the entire family territory. After all, he was already an emperor realm expert. Everyone was speechless. What was going on with the patriarch? What was the use of just roaring? Chu Zan was speechless. Ever since Chu Tianming had started roaring when he was angry back then, he seemed to have become addicted to it, as if he wanted everyone to know that he was angry. Chu Yun went back to the ancestral residence to comfort Chu Tianming. In the entire Chu family, only Chu Yun dared to look for Chu Tianming at this time. Even the Chu family elders did not dare to go. They were afraid that Chu Tianming would find an excuse to punish them. Chu Yun was an exception. No matter how angry Chu Tianming was, the moment he saw Chu Yun, he would smile and calm down. On this day, Ding Yu and the others came to look for Chu Zan. They were all at the ninth level of the Supreme Realm. Their next step would be to break through to the Heaven Realm. However, the Heaven Realm was not so easy to reach. The Great Daoyuan Calamity is about to arrive. The laws will change. All of you, head out. Chu Zan waved his hand. It was time for these disciples to go out and explore the world. Only by adventuring outside would they trigger the system reward for him. Yes, Master. Shang Xing was filled with excitement. He was finally going to return to the Southern Zone. Back then, he was called many names. B asterisk starred, freak, and so on, by the Shang family. Now, he was already a ninth level Supreme Realm expert. When he returned this time, he would definitely shake the Shang family and shake the Southern Zone. It was time for some people in the Shang family to learn their lessons. If they still recognized him as a member of the Shang family, then so be it. If they did not, then he would leave the Shang family and have nothing to do with them anymore. Ding Yu and Xiao Liang left together. The two of them were famous for their battle prowess, and neither of them had the confidence to completely defeat the other. Hei Yu also left the small courtyard. She was in charge of the Heavenly Dao Talisman plan, so she also needed to make plans for the Great Daoyuan Calamity. She had to return to the central region of the central zone as well. If her master's plan was successful, then was a human king's family a big deal? She was the person in charge of the Heavenly Dao Talisman plan, so she could still suppress them. Wang Luo returned to the northern region and continued to mess with the Wang family. He was just like Chu Pingfan, who was currently messing with the Ji family in the eastern region. The Ji family was furious, but could do nothing about it. Chu Pingfan's own strength, while terrifying in its own right, was nothing in comparison to that existence behind him. The fate treasures of the Asura ancient land had all fallen into the hands of Ding Yu and the others, and it was obvious that Chu Pingfan hailed from the same sect. From this, it could be seen how terrifying the power behind them was. Each one was a peerless genius. Moreover, when they thought of the fallen divine realm expert from the Heavenly Saint Sect, they trembled. That existence was not something they could afford to offend. Ding Yu and the others probably had a certain relationship with that mysterious existence who had set the rules for the Asura ancient land. Due to this, the Ji family elders did not dare to directly make a move. 
However, none of their juniors were a match for Chu Pingfan, and were targeted every now and then. Chu Yuan seemed to be holding a grudge as well. After allying with a few forces, he had started a business alliance and was nibbling away at the Ji family's business. Before Wang Luo left, he asked Chu Zan, Master, I would like to impart some alchemy skills to others, is that possible? Chu Zan nodded. He did not object to his disciples starting a sect. What if the sects they started triggered a system reward for him? Master, can I impart my artifact refining skills to others? Shang Xing also asked, as long as you know your own limits. Chu Zan nodded. After Wang Luo left, Chu Zan stopped Shang Xing, who was about to leave. Chapter 270 Hu Tianya he knew that Shang Xing had some sort of karma with him, and that his background was unusual. Even though his strength had increased, it was hard to guarantee that he would not encounter some unforeseen circumstances when he returned to the southern zone. Shang Xing's mother had consumed the fire Dao fruit. Whether it was by chance or due her own extraordinary status, there had to be some story behind it. It was time to remind Shang Xing. Master, what are your instructions? Chu Zan asked after some deliberation, Do you know who your mother is? Shang Xing was startled, and said, When I was still young, my mother left and never returned. I haven't heard from her since. After a pause, he continued, There are rumors among the Shang family that my mother ran away with someone else and abandoned me. As for my father, he said that my mother died in an accident. Shang Xing was puzzled. He did not understand why his master had brought up his mother. The memories of his mother were all from when he was very young. He only remembered that when his mother was still alive, his situation was still passable, and he was not called a freak or a monster then. Once his mother disappeared, his situation quickly took a turn for the worse. Once his fiery bones were exposed, everyone started calling him a monster or freak. Your innate fiery bones physique was a result of your mother swallowing a fire Dao fruit, which caused her bloodline to transform. Chu Zan reminded him, anyone who can swallow a Dao fruit is extraordinary, no matter the reason. Shang Xing's heart shook. His innate fiery bones physique was caused by his mother swallowing the fire Dao fruit, resulting in the transformation of her bloodline? In the past, he had always thought that his mother was just an average woman without status. Now he knew that there was some secret hidden beneath all this. Thank you, Master. Shang Xing bowed. Chu Zan waved his hand and took a drop of blood essence from Shang Xing's body. Then, he condensed it into rebirth blood and handed it over to Shang Xing. For this drop of rebirth blood, after you return to the southern zone, find a safe place to hide it. If anything happens, you will be resurrected in the southern zone. Shang Xing's heart shook. Could it be that his mother's karma was so strong that he might encounter tremendous danger? Dao fruits were treasures that even divine realm experts would fight over. Therefore, the implications of this revelation were very wide. In that case, how could his mother have gone missing? Thank you, Master. Shang Xing kowtowed three times respectfully. Go. If you were in a desperate situation, you can activate the soul chasing mark. Chu Zan waved his hand. Yes, Master. Shang Xing left, embarking on a journey back to the southern zone's eastern region. He had condensed another drop of rebirth blood for Shang Xing because he felt that if Shang Xing did not have time to use the soul chasing mark, he would be killed. He would then be resurrected in the southern zone instead of returning to the pocket dimension. Ever since he gained the power to condense rebirth blood, Chu Zan had not left any wisps of his power in his disciples' bodies. The children of fate still had to take risks, and at the same time, they had to know when to be cautious. If they had a wisp of his power, they would lose all sense of caution and act recklessly. He did not want his disciples to end up like that. That would be useless. Still, he had given him a trump card. That way, if he encountered an old fellow who bullied the younger generation, he would have a way to deal with it. After the disciples left, Chu Zan refocused his attention on the Heavenly Dao Law's expansion into the other four regions. Ding Yu went to the Earth Spirit Race and brought them out from their mystic realm into the world. He roamed through the dangerous lands that had been famous for a long time in the northern zone as well as the various mystic realms that had been opened. Lu Piaopiao followed Xiao Liang. They roamed the northern zone and challenged the dangerous lands as well as the territories of some small families there. Wang Luo opened an alchemy hall in the northern region and taught alchemy skills there. Countless cultivators flocked to him and he gathered a large number of followers. The Wang family's patriarch changed. The new family patriarch went over to Wang Luo to apologize and asked him to return to the Wang family. However, Wang Luo refused. Hei Yu laid out many plans for the northern zone, including plans to develop talents. She led a group of people to the eastern region to meet up with Qin Ying and focused on developing the Black Moon Tower in the eastern region. 
At present, Chu Zan had access to almost all of the information of the forces in the eastern region. The foundation for the Heavenly Dao Talisman plan had been laid. Everything was developing very well. On this day, a few Daoyuan realm cultivators suddenly appeared in the Great Dao Communication Group. They were all brought in by Hong Yuanchu. The origin Dao Crystal's Dao aura that he had given to Hong Yuanchu came in handy for this. The new Daoyuan realm cultivators included humans, demons, and demi-humans. Due to the threat of the Great Calamity, Hong Yuanchu, Mo Tu, and Soaring Flood Dragon King had already met privately. Using the origin Dao Crystal's Dao aura, they pulled their acquaintances into the Great Dao Communication Group. Chu Zan was secretly happy. There were more Daoyuan realm cultivators now, which was a good thing. Welcome, fellow Daoists. Chu Zan greeted the newcomers. The new Daoyuan realm cultivators all opened their mouths to pay their respects to Chu Zan, the group leader. They even flattered him. It was obvious that the prospect of an unknown great calamity had frightened them. Veteran Daoyuan realm experts like Hong Yuan guessed that Chu Zan had set up this group to prepare for the Great Calamity, which spoke volumes of how terrifying the Great Calamity would be. In addition, although the fate of the Demon Zone was changing recently, Mo Tu was no longer paying attention to it. For existences like them, who were supposed to be immortal after opening their Dao paths, the prospect of something that could kill them was unnerving. After flattering him for a while, they naturally changed the topic to the Great Calamity. Chu Zan smiled and slipped away quietly. He took out the Heavenly Dao talisman and continued to modify and strengthen the Heavenly Dao laws, infusing his new insights into it. Then, your disciple, Hu Tianya, defeated one of the fated children of the Monster Zone in the Monster Zone's Genius Tournament. His fate underwent a transformation and his strength has increased greatly. You have been rewarded with the Four Spirit Stars Chariot. The system's reward suddenly came. Chu Zan was stunned. Hu Tianya, this disciple, had finally done something? Hu Tianya had started his journey. Chu Zan took out the myriad heavenly mirror and connected it to Hu Tianya. It had been a long time since he had seen or paid attention to this disciple. The image projection appeared. In an arena, an awe-inspiring multicolored white tiger looked down on everyone present. His tiger paw was suppressing someone, which was the transformed form of a certain monster race genius. Roar! Hu Tianya roared, and his might shook the surroundings. The expressions of the many monsters around the arena. They could vaguely feel that their bloodlines were being suppressed. Meanwhile, the elders of the Heavenly Tiger tribe were grinning from ear to ear. No matter how rebellious Hu Tianya was, he was, after all, a member of the Heavenly Tiger tribe. From the stage, Hu Tianya looked down at a beautiful and refined woman with a small horn on her head and he roared, I will no longer allow myself to be bullied. I, Hu Tianya, am a peerless Heaven's Blessed. Chapter 271 Four Spirit Stars Chariot Seeing Hu Tianya Roaring, Chu Zan was rendered speechless. This tiger was really something. In order for this cowardly and lazy tiger to be able to roar these words out proudly, he must have worked hard for a long time. Was that beautiful horned woman his fiancée, the princess of the Azure Dragon tribe? At this moment, the other party's face was ashen. Hu Tianya was elated. His master was right. Only through hard work would there be happiness. You look down on me, but now I have proved you wrong. Roar. A monster should look like a monster. This is my true form and my strongest state. Hu Tianya roared. Who else wants some? With a swipe of his tiger paw, he slapped the genius under his paw off the platform. Standing on the platform and looking down at the spectator, Hu Tianya's disposition was majestic and extraordinary. The Azure Dragon Princess jumped onto the stage. Hu Tianya, I'll fight you. On what basis do you have the right to fight me? Hu Tianya looked at her. I'm your fiancé. The Azure Dragon Princess gritted her teeth and said. We've already broken off our engagement. Hu Tianya raised his paw and waved it. Don't randomly call yourself my fiancé. I, Hu Tianya, am not a casual tiger. Die. The Azure Dragon Princess was furious and charged forward. However, with a wave of Hu Tianya's paw, his killing intent engulfed her and forced her to retreat. Roar. Suddenly, a roar sounded and an Azure Dragon rose into the air and pounced towards Hu Tianya. The Azure Dragon Princess immediately transformed into her true form to fight. Hu Tianya's body trembled and suddenly turned into a fierce tiger the size of a small mountain. Within just a few seconds, he had pressed the Azure Dragon Princess to the ground. Too weak. Hu Tianya shook his head. The Azure Dragon Princess was furious. Her Azure Dragon body suddenly coiled around Hu Tianya's body. Do you actually want to ruin my innocence? Quickly, get lost. Hu Tianya let out a very exaggerated strange cry. 
his body rolled on the stage, trying to get rid of the Azure Dragon Princess. As a result, the Azure Dragon Princess became dizzy from all the rolling about. She had no choice but to transform back into her human form. Hu Tianya's paw swept the Azure Dragon Princess off the stage in an indifferent manner. After roaring towards the sky, he swept his gaze around once again and shouted, Who else wants some? Hu Tianya was very arrogant at this moment, but he had every right to be. Standing on the platform, he looked down at the monster race's geniuses. No one stepped forward to challenge him. Jumping off the platform, he walked past a Heavenly Tiger Tribe elder in an arrogant fashion. The Heavenly Tiger Tribe elder was not angry at all. Instead, he felt that this was what a true proud tiger should be like. How arrogant. This was how a tiger should be. Chu Zan examined Hu Tianya's fate. It had already undergone a transformation. Moreover, he had begun to activate the Divine White Tiger bloodline. Would the Divine White Tiger reappear in the Nine Zones? When Hu Tianya returned to his resting place, Chu Zan appeared and met him. His goal was to give Hu Tianya an important reminder that the Great Daoyuan Calamity was coming, and that he should fight for fate. It would be best if he could gather the fate of the entire monster race. At the same time, through Hu Tianya, he would distribute communication talismans and their refining method to the monster zone. This would lay the foundation for the Heavenly Dao talisman plan here. Finally, he encouraged Hu Tianya. Hu Tianya's blood boiled. As his bloodline began to transform, Hu Tianya would become aggressive and seek out fights. Chu Zan was not worried about Hu Tianya. He was the son of fate of the Heavenly Tiger Tribe. Now that his fate had transformed, he also carried part of the Monster Zone's fate. There might not be a genius among the monster race who could defeat him. After all, Hu Tianya, the Divine White Tiger's bloodline suppressed the other monster tribes to a certain extent. After ending his conversation with Hu Tianya, Chu Zan examined the system's reward. The Four Spirit Stars Chariot traverses the Starlight River and is pulled along by the Four Divine Beasts. It can traverse the Great Tao, and can also traverse the Primal Chaos. What a great tool for showing off. When it moved, the Starlight River would trail behind it, and it had four Divine Beasts to pull it. Was that not just majestic and awe-inspiring? This was in line with his identity as a super big shot. Chu Zan also noticed that the Four Spirit Stars Chariot could traverse the Great Tao as well as the Primal Chaos. He knew about the Great Tao, but not the Primal Chaos. Perhaps it was beyond the Great Tao? Did the Great Tao have an end and a boundary? He had no idea. Perhaps it was beyond the Nine Zones. Chu Zan glanced at the Origin Tao Crystal. He wanted to rely on the Origin Tao Crystal to connect to the Great Tao and increase his cultivation level, but could not do so until it transformed. As such, the fastest way to raise his cultivation level was to continue the Heavenly Tao Talisman plan. Every time the Heavenly Dao Laws conquered a region, he would be rewarded with a cultivation boost. The Nine Zones had 50 regions, though the Dao Realm only had 36 levels. After breaking through the 36th level of the Dao Realm, he would open his Dao Path. As for whether or not he would be stuck at the 36th level of the Dao Realm and never be able to open a Dao Path, Chu Zan was not worried about that. With the absolute beginning Dao Scripture as his cultivation technique, reaching the Dao Yuan Realm would not be a problem for him. Moreover, the Heavenly Tao Talisman Plan also brought him endless insights, which allowed him to grasp new Tao principles. This provided him with a reference for perfecting his own Great Tao. Chu Zan looked at the situation in the Demon Zone. After the return of Buddha Nanwu, the expansion of the Buddhist sect accelerated, and more and more demons converted to the Buddhist sect. Just the phrase, all beings are equal, made the lower-level demons of the Demon Zone excited about joining. Those with a little talent wholeheartedly joined the Buddhist sect and became its disciples. They fought for the Buddhist sect and practiced Buddhist Dharma. Temples began to appear in the Demon Zone. The Dewey Buddhist Temple was the holy land and ancestral court of the Buddhist sect in the Demon Zone. As the Buddhist sect grew stronger and expanded, conflicts were inevitable, and battles happened every day. The higher-ups of the Heavenly Demon Tribe also began to pay attention to the Buddhist sect. On one occasion, they even sent ten peak heaven realm experts to attack the Dewey Buddhist temple, trying to destroy the holy land of the Buddhist sect and their place of worship. Although the disciples of the Buddhist sect were all demons before they converted, after they converted, they no longer considered themselves demons, and even took it upon themselves to convert other demons. Moreover, the ideology spread by Buddhism completely contrasted with that of the demons. When these disciples saw other demons, they would recite, Almsgiver, you have sinned greatly, put down the butcher's knife, convert to Buddhism, and so on. Furthermore, the chanting of Buddhist scriptures restrained the demon race to a certain extent and could purify the demon power, which was absolutely unacceptable. 
Thus, the heavenly demon tribes higher ups made a move. Chapter 272. Buddhist region The Buddhist sect began to develop rapidly. However, in the entire demon zone, its area of influence was only half a region. The five regions of the demon zone, in terms of size, surpassed the northern zone, and was almost the same size as the central zone, the most prosperous zone of the human race, which was divided into ten regions. Although the higher ups of the heavenly demon tribe decided to take action, they did not mobilize in full force. After all, the Buddhist sect only occupied half a region's influence and could only be considered a medium sized force in the demon zone. How could it be compared to the heavenly demon tribe? They were confident that ten peak heaven realm experts were sufficient. After all, the experts of the heavenly demon tribe were 30% stronger than the other experts of the demon race. Moreover, Buddhism had just been established, so they had limited heaven realm experts, and might not even have peak heaven realm experts. In the end, once they entered the Dewey Buddhist temple, they never returned. The heavenly demon tribe realized that something was wrong. None of those ten peak heaven realm experts had returned. They were furious. The Buddhism sect was clearly provoking the heavenly demon tribe. This was unforgivable. They sent out another ten peak heaven realm experts, led by three half-step divine realm experts, to destroy the Dewey Buddhist temple. In the end, the eminent monks who walked out of the Dewey Buddhist temple turned out to be the ten peak heaven realm experts who had attacked the temple previously. What was even more terrifying was that four of these ten people had already reached the half-step divine realm. All of them had kind faces and shiny bald heads. They wore kasayas and clasped their palms together. Benefactor, put down the butcher's knife and become a Buddhist immediately. The heavenly demon tribe experts were furious. They realized that something was wrong. Something was very wrong with the Buddhist sect. They were not fools. With those four half-step divine realm experts present, they would not be able to defeat them. As such, they wanted to retreat immediately, but the formation of the Dewey Buddhist temple was activated, trapping them inside. Buddhist light surged, and the sound of chanting could be heard continuously. Demon Buddha, who was dressed in a snow-white monk robe, clasped his palms together and walked over to convert them to Buddhism. The final attackers were those three half-step divine realm experts with strong wills. They were extremely loyal to the demon race and could not be converted, so they were killed. The other ten people, however, were all converted. The array formation of the Dewey Buddhist temple contained the blessing of the Buddha Nanwu. The ten experts of the heavenly demon tribe naturally could not withstand it. After another failed attack, the heavenly demon tribe fell silent. They knew that something was wrong with the Dewey Buddhist temple. The Buddhist sect continued expanding and finally occupied a region, which they named the Buddhist region. Every demon in this region had converted to Buddhism. As far as the eye could see, almost all of them were bald. The Buddhist clan was thereby established. Once the Buddhist clan was established and occupied a region, the system's reward arrived. Your disciple, Demon Buddha, led the Buddhist clan and made it stronger, occupying a region in the demon zone. You have been rewarded with an advancement for the left and right Buddhist attendants. Tao Realm. After advancing, the left and right Buddhist attendants reached the first level of the Tao Realm. He finally possessed Tao Realm subordinates, which strengthened the forces under Chu Zan's command. Chu Yi and Chu Er were now half-step Tao realm experts. If they transformed once more, they would be able to reach the Tao realm. They were no longer soul puppets. They were already in a new type of life form with their own thoughts and consciousness. However, for the time being, neither Chu Yi nor Chu Er could transform and step into the Tao realm. They had to wait for the origin Tao crystal to transform and upgrade before they could do so. Chu Zong was about to close the myriad heavenly mirror, when he suddenly realized that a powerful aura had erupted in the demon zone. Divine Realm. An ancestor of the demon race. Once the Divine Realm experts left the desolate ancient zone, they naturally returned to their respective zones. The demon race Divine Realm experts were no different. After the heavenly demon tribe suffered two defeats, an ancestor of the demon race personally took action. Buddha Nanwu stood up and chanted the Buddhist scriptures. With a flash, he arrived outside the Buddhist region. Amitabha. Benefactor has committed a grave sin. Put down the butcher's knife and join our Buddhist sect. Sincerely repent and wash away your sins. You're courting death. The divine realm ancestor of the demon race was furious. He was merely a bald man at the first level of the divine realm, yet he dared to say such impudent things. The cultivation level that Buddha Nanwu displayed externally was just that. The divine realm ancestor of the demon race had reached the fourth level of the divine realm, so he naturally did not take Buddha Nanwu seriously. Boom! Demonic power soared into the sky and erupted violently. 
Buddha Nanwu pressed his palms together, and Buddhist light rippled out, transforming into a huge bell that headed straight for the Divine Realm Ancestor, imprisoning him. He was then brought back to the Dewey Buddhist Temple and locked into the Demon Suppression Tower. Buddha Nanwu did not have the ability to convert Divine Realm cultivators. The Divine Realm was extraordinary after all. When Chu Zan saw this scene, he pondered on whether or not to send the world purifying glazed pagoda over to help convert the demon race's experts. There were definitely more than one demon race divine realm expert. If all of them were to be converted to Buddhism, then the process of the Buddhist clan taking over the demon zone would increase rapidly. If even their divine realm experts converted, how could the other demons resist? They probably would not. With this thought in mind, Chu Zan decided to send the world purifying glazed pagoda over and make it the supreme treasure of the Buddhist clan. No one could take away the world purifying glazed pagoda anyway. Chu Zan was still its master, and could take it back at any time. He immediately appeared through the image projection and met with demon Buddha and Buddha Nanwu, he encouraged them and taught them the scriptures. The Buddhist clan of the Nine Zones has just been established, so it needs a supreme treasure. This world purifying glazed pagoda will be the supreme treasure of the Buddhist clan. Chu Zan then sent the world purifying glazed pagoda over. At the same time, he gave Demon Buddha and Buddha Nanwu the permission to use OT. He also gave them the right to assign permission to others to use it. After obtaining the world purifying glazed pagoda, Buddha Nanwu immediately threw the Divine Realm Demon Ancestor into the second level of the world purifying glazed pagoda to suppress and convert him. The glazed pagoda had a total of seven levels, and each level was more powerful than the one before. The second level was sufficient to convert the Divine Realm Demons. In fact, the first level could convert Divine Realm Demons as well, but it would take a longer time. Chu Zan asked Demon Buddha and Buddha Nanwu to start promoting communication talismans in the Demon Zone to lay the foundation for the Heavenly Tao Talisman Plan. After ending the conversation, Chu Zan raised his head up into the sky. The Heavenly Tao laws were about to take over the Western region. The Great Daoyuan Calamity was getting closer. Chu Zan's next goal was to help the Heaven Realm experts under the Heavenly Tao Laws advance to the Divine Realm in order to strengthen the Heavenly Tao Laws. Chapter 273, The Shang Family of the Southern Zone Although Chu Zan was busy with the Heavenly Tao Talisman Plan, he would occasionally pay attention to his disciples. Southern Zone, Eastern Region, Shang Family, Shang Xing had returned. The news of the Freak B asterisk starred son of the Shang Family returning quickly spread throughout the Shang Family. Everyone thought that this monster had already died and did not expect him to suddenly return. At this moment, Shang Xing was in the study room of Shang Bang, the head of the Shang family. Shang Bang was also his father. Originally, Shang Xing's plan was to cause trouble for some members of the Shang family after he returned. However, after he found out from Chu Zan that there seemed to be a secret hidden behind the matter of his mother, he restrained himself first. Instead, the first thing he did was to find out about his mother. Shang Bang looked at his son. There was no expression on his face, much less the surprise and excitement of a long-awaited reunion between father and son. His gaze was very calm. The cultivation level that Shang Xing revealed at this moment was only the first level of the spirit realm. It doesn't matter where you've been all these years. Since you're back, you should stay in the Shang family's territory. There's no need to pay attention to the gossip, Shang Bang said calmly. Shang Xing looked at his father with a complicated expression. Ever since he was young, his father's attitude toward him had always been the same. There had been no changes, and he had never felt any care from his father. Even when he was mocked and bullied in the Shang family, his father had never stood up for him. His father had not even bothered examining the strange disease he had. Was his father's attitude due to his status as an illegitimate son? Shang Xing could not figure it out. I came back to settle some accounts and investigate some things. Shang Xing's gaze carried a hint of coldness as he said this. Shang Bang was silent for a moment before he said, Do you have the ability to do so? Don't bring shame upon yourself. It's up to you whether you want to settle accounts or not. He then added, Those in the Shang family, you are not allowed to kill. Killing or not killing was not within Shang Xing's considerations. He only wanted to vent his anger. If he needed to kill someone in order to vent his anger, he did not mind killing. If the Shang family would not tolerate it, then he would leave the Shang family. I'm not sure if I will kill someone. What if I do? Shang Xing said calmly. According to the rules of the Shang family, family members are not allowed to kill one another. They might have mocked and humiliated you, and you can do the same to them, but you are not allowed to kill anyone. For the first time, Shang Bang's tone became serious. Shang Xing nodded. If he did not kill them, so be it. 
Perhaps humiliating them was better than killing them to vent his anger. Having the person who they once mocked and bullied trampling them under his feet. That would probably be worse than killing them, right? I want to investigate something. It's about my mother. Shang Xing looked straight at Shang Bang. However, the expression on Shang Bang's face did not change much. What is there to investigate? Your mother has gone missing. Missing? Do you know my mother's background? A maid of the Shang family. Shang Bang looked at him impatiently and said, All right, you can leave now. Shang Xing pressed his palms on the desk and stared at Shang Bang. You are my father. My instincts tell me that you know something. Do you know what's going on with my bones? I don't know. You can leave now. Shang Bang waved his hand to chase him away. Shang Xing did not move. My bones are innate fiery bones. It is a special physique. Did you really not know, or were you just pretending not to know? Shang Bang's expression changed. It was the first time he looked at Shang Xing properly. He frowned slightly and asked, Innate fiery bones. I have never heard of such a special physique. It should be. After staring at Shang Xing for a few breaths, he continued, It should be the fire elemental physique, not some innate fiery bones. Whether it was the fire elemental physique or innate fiery bones, it meant that Shang Bang knew that he was not a monster. Shang Xing grinned and said with a self deprecating smile, Regardless of which one it was, you are my father. Why did you sit by and watch me be ridiculed as a monster? Shang Bang was silent for a while before he said, The fire elemental physique is very special. It requires a special secret technique to be activated in order to stimulate one's talent. And your fire elemental physique is even more special. Shang Xing's eyes flashed. The key clue to his mother was this fire elemental physique. In the southern zone, or in the entire nine zones, which family had the bloodline of the fire elemental physique? Perhaps, he would be able to find out some information about his mother from this. Naturally, Shang Xing did not think that he had the fire elemental body. If his master said that he was born with the fire bone, then he would not be wrong. The Shang family does not have a secret technique to activate the fire elemental physique, right? Which family has the bloodline of the fire elemental physique? Which family does my mother come from? Shang Xing asked. Shang Bang frowned and said, Just stay in the Shang family's territory. Your mother's matter is not something you can interfere with. As expected, you do know. Even if you don't tell me, I can and will find out. Shang Xing turned around and left the study. Seeing Shang Xing leave, Shang Bang frowned. After a long while, he said, Huiying, don't let him investigate this matter. There was a flash of fire in the study room, and a muffled voice replied, Yes, master. Shang Xing left the study room feeling stifled. His father knew everything, but had allowed him to be laughed at and bullied anyway. Whether there was a hidden reason behind this, or if he had no other choice, he could not accept it. It was time to find someone to vent his anger on. He walked toward one of the courtyards of the Shang family. Just as he arrived at the entrance of the courtyard, he heard a mocking voice, Yo, isn't this the Shang family's disgraceful little monster? He didn't die out there, but actually came back. Boom. Shang Xing's heart was stifled. He could not be bothered to waste his breath. He immediately struck out, knocking the other party to the ground. The sound of bones breaking could be heard, You. The other party spat out a mouthful of blood, his face filled with disbelief. Shang Xing walked forward. His feet stepped on the other party's body, and the sound of bones breaking could be heard again. You're not as good as the person you called trash. What right do you have to be arrogant? At this moment, Shang Xing felt very comfortable after stepping on an enemy. He kept going. Yo, it's the shame of the Shang family. You monster, you still have the face to come back. Another mocking voice was heard. Following that, there was a scream. The aura of an emperor-level cultivator erupted briefly before disappearing. In this small courtyard, Shang Xing was taking a stroll. Every step he took was on someone's body. The sound of bones breaking was like a beautiful melody. A bunch of trash. You guys are a waste of resources. Say, have you guys been busy eating sh asterisk tea all these years? Your cultivation levels haven't improved at all. All the resources of the Shang family have been wasted on you. Are your lives still worth living? Kill yourselves? The Shang family members on the ground were miserable. Their eyes were also burning with rage. You, you just attacked your own family. You, you. Shang Xing directly stepped on the other party's face, and his entire face deformed. Chapter 274. Myriad wonders how Shang Xing sneered, attacking my own family. It doesn't matter unless I kill all of you. And even if I do, so what? Shang Xing looked down at his peers who were lying on the ground. He said with murderous intent, Don't provoke me, or I'll kill all of you. The entire courtyard fell silent. 
the people lying on the ground no longer dared to speak. Shang Xing seemed to be serious. They did not want to anger Shang Xing. What if he really killed them on impulse? Even if Shang Xing was punished by the family rules later, they would still be dead. What was the point? Their lives were more important. Shang Xing looked at them. He shook his head in disappointment and said, Why did you stop insulting me? Why are you lowering your heads? Shang Xing smiled. He suddenly realized that he was no longer on the same level as them. There was no point in killing them. This could be considered as taking revenge for his past experiences. He shook his head, turned around, and left. He returned to the remote, shabby little courtyard where he had once lived. There were some weeds growing in the courtyard. It had been a long time since anyone had lived there. With a wave of his hand, flames lit up, and the grass was burned clean. After a simple cleaning, Shang Xing sat down on the stone bench in the courtyard. Dear readers, you are reading on our content stealing site. Please copy and search this link, web links, to support us. Fire Elemental Physique Which family's bloodline had the Fire Elemental Physique? It would definitely not be a small family. Shang Xing took out the Myriad Zones talisman. He was about to contact Hei Yu to inquire about this matter. This junior sister of his was experienced and knowledgeable. After all, she was the mastermind behind Black Moon Tower. Furthermore, she had an extraordinary background, she knew far more than them. Therefore, Shang Xing was about to contact Hei Yu as soon as possible. Suddenly, he raised his head and looked outside the small courtyard. He said, Don't bother me. Stay away from me. Outside the small courtyard, a figure suddenly appeared. He looked at Shang Xing in surprise for a while, and then disappeared on the spot. After that person left, Shang Xing took out a pill and threw it on the ground. An array formation appeared, enveloping the small courtyard. He used the Myriad Zones talisman to contact Hei Yu, asking her about the Fire Elemental Physique. Fire Elemental Physique? Hei Yu was momentarily stunned, and then continued, The Feng family of the Southern Zone possesses the Fire Elemental Physique. The direct descendants of the Feng family, those with pure bloodlines, or those with outstanding talent, all possess the Fire Elemental Physique. The Feng family. Shang Xing's expression turned solemn. A human king's family. With his current strength, he was not strong enough to deal with a human king's family, but he also did not want to ask his master for help. Shang Xing ended his conversation with Hei Yu. Rummaging through his childhood memories, he recalled that his mother's name was Ruping. If she really came from the Feng family, then her name was Feng Ruping. What exactly happened? His master had once said that his mother had swallowed the fire Dao fruit, which caused him to be born with the innate fiery bones. Did the Dao fruit originate from the Feng family? What kind of secret was behind this? Shang Xing thought of a person. Feng Xiaoqing. Perhaps he could start from this person and slowly unearth the secret. Thinking this, Shang Xing could not sit still, he left the small courtyard. Elsewhere, Shang Bang said in surprise, he discovered that you were secretly watching him? Yes, master. Shang Bang's expression changed again, and he said, quick, stop him from leaving the Shang family's territory. Hearing that, the figure disappeared from where he was. However, when he rushed to the courtyard, Shang Xing had already left. He did not stop, and immediately chased after Shang Xing. Just as Shang Xing left the Shang family, he sensed that an aura had locked onto him. The other party was chasing after him. He did not have the intention to tangle with the other party. The flames around his body flickered, and he turned into a ray of light, disappearing into the horizon. He moved so fast that even a Heaven Realm expert could not catch up. Aurora technique. The figure looked at Shang Xing, who had disappeared into the horizon, shocked. How old was he? How could he be so strong? When Shang Xing was suppressing his peers, he had also suppressed an Emperor Realm family member. Now, even a Heaven Realm expert like him had failed to catch him. He was too monstrous. After Shang Bang received the news, he remained silent for a long time. He only waved his hand, telling the figure to leave. Sitting on the chair, Shang Bang remained silent for a long time before he stood up. He opened a secret door in the study and entered a passage. He walked around in a circle and finally arrived in front of a stone room. He squeezed out a drop of blood from his fingertip and drew a symbol on the door of the stone room. The restriction array on the stone door disappeared, and the stone door opened. Inside the stone room, there was a small pond. Wisps of spiritual energy wafted out, covering the entire stone room in a layer of spiritual mist. Within the hazy spiritual mist, a figure was seated cross-legged on a crimson stone platform that seemed to be overflowing with aura. That figure's eyes were tightly shut, seemingly unaware of Shang Bang's arrival. 
Shang Bang entered the stone room and stood in front of that figure, seemingly struggling. The spiritual mist surged out of the stone room, and the hazy spiritual mist began to dissipate. The figure on the scarlet red stone platform actually had the same figure and appearance as Shang Bang. Should I merge with it? Shang Bang muttered in a low voice, and a helpless expression appeared on his face. Just a little bit more. Although I have a divine real body, but. Let's wait a little longer. Shang Bang sighed and left the stone room. Southern Zone, Eastern Region, Myriad Wonders House. The Myriad Wonders House was a special faction. It was famous for its strangeness, the treasures it sold were all quite unique. Its cultivation techniques were also quite unique. Even its people were quite unique. The members of the Myriad Wonders House were mostly women, and all of them were extraordinarily beautiful. Among them, the most famous ones were the Myriad Wonders' 13 flowers. They were incomparably beautiful, with all sorts of talents. No one even knew their actual levels of strength. The Myriad Wonders House was also very well informed. Shang Xing stood in the Myriad Wonders House's territory, in front of a small courtyard that was suffused with faint medicinal fragrance. His expression was somewhat strange. The owner of the courtyard was one of the Myriad Wonders' 13 flowers, Hua Ziying. Yo, isn't this that little monster? You didn't die outside? A clear and melodious voice came from the small courtyard. Why are you standing there like a fool? Come in and let me take a look at you. Shang Xing's facial muscles twitched. If he did not have a favor to ask of someone, he would not have come to the Myriad Wonders house again. Back then, when he had almost died while being studied, it was Hua Ziying who saved him. In the end, Hua Ziying was even more curious than the others. She almost removed all of the flesh from his body just to study his fiery bones. He could not help but shiver when he thought of this beautiful woman who had held a small knife in her hand while cutting his body with a smile on her face. Although he did not feel any pain at that time, that scene was still very frightening. He took a deep breath and walked into the small courtyard. There were a few iron men in the courtyard, these were all puppets. Back then, Shang Xing had been very surprised by these puppets. He felt that the person who was able to create such puppets was definitely a master refiner. Seeing them again now, in Shang Xing's eyes, they were just wooden scrap metal. He had no interest in them at all. Chapter 275 you're not crazy, but I'm going crazy. As usual, Chu Zan was casually checking out how his disciples were faring. When he reached Shang Xing's turn, he saw his red-faced disciple being pressed to the ground by a beautiful woman. He did not expect Shang Xing to have an old lover in the southern zone. However, his old lover was really old, he thought that Xiao Liang's lover was already old enough. He did not expect that Shang Xing's lover was even older than Lu Piaopiao. However, Shang Xing's lover was a little special. Was it related to the cultivation technique that she cultivated? Glancing at the Myriad Wonder House's territory and seeing the other twelve flowers, Chu Zan could not help but exclaim in surprise. This clone technique was quite exquisite. Splitting twelve wisps of the soul to condense twelve clones. Each clone had its own personality and consciousness. When separated, they were all in the heaven realm. Once the clones merged, who knew what the owner's cultivation would be? Shang Xing was blessed. Chu Zan did not continue watching. Shang Xing broke free from Hua Qianzi's hand. His face was red from holding it in. It took him a long time to calm down. With his current strength, he could naturally tell that Hua Qianzi was extraordinary. Of course, he only thought that she was very strong and should have reached the heaven realm. Moreover, she was definitely not a little girl. Sister Hua, I have something to ask of you. HMPH. Hua Ziying snorted softly, you have no conscience. You only look for me when you need something. The corners of Shang Xing's mouth twitched. He could not hold it in any longer. He sighed in his heart. It was his eldest senior brother who was farsighted. Having no woman in his heart would naturally be the best. Looking at the embarrassed Shang Xing, Hua Ziying narrowed her eyes and said, All right, little monster. Spit it out. What do you want? Shang Xing said seriously, I want to know the whereabouts of Feng Xiaoqing. Who? Hua Ziying also became serious. The descendant of the human king, Feng Xiaoqing. Shang Xing repeated himself for clarity. Hua Ziying stared at him without blinking. You have a grudge against him? Moreover, with your ability, are you even capable of messing with him? I have a reason to look for him. You can just tell me his whereabouts. Sure. But how are you going to repay me? Hua Ziying said with a smile. Why don't you give me your bones? Shang Xing said with a dark face. Stop fooling around. I'm serious. After thinking for a while, he took out a puppet and said, I'll give you this as a reward. Huh. Hua Ziying was surprised. 
She took the puppet and looked at it for a moment. Then, she asked curiously, Where did you get this puppet? I made it myself. Oh, the little monster can lie now. This is not good. Hua Zhang stood up and leaned over. She stretched out her fair fingers, pinching Shang Xing's face, pulling his cheeks. Shang Xing's face turned even darker. He wanted to dodge, but he knew that he could not. The difference in their strength was too large. Release me. Shang Xing raised his hand to pull away Hua Zhang's hands. The two of them struggled for a while until Shang Xing's hands touched a spot that should not be touched. Only then did it stop. You're really bad. Hua Zhang rolled her eyes at him and stored the puppet away. Forget it. I'll believe you for now. Then, she said seriously, tell me honestly, why are you looking for Feng Xiaoqing? The human king's Feng family is not an ordinary force. I want to ask him about someone. It won't be that easy. He won't give you any answers. Feng Xiaoqing is a very proud person. He has great ambitions. He wants to be the third human king of the Feng family, Hua Zhang shook her head and said. The Feng family has two human kings, Shang Xing asked in surprise. The first human king of the Feng family emerged a very long time ago. When the Feng family was in decline, a second human king emerged. Rumor has it that this person was also the last human king of the human race. Hua Zhang shook her head and said, Feng Xiaoqing believes that the current Feng family is in a period of decline. He wants to revive the Feng family. For proud people, it's easier to deal with them head on. They will also fulfill their promises. Shang Xing said in a deep voice, I want to challenge him. After beating him, I will ask him about that person, or to help me find her. Whereabouts? Is there something wrong with your brain? Hua Zhang's beautiful eyes widened in shock. Do you want to challenge Feng Xiaoqing? Do you have the ability? Little monster, listen to your sister's advice and don't throw your life away. Moreover, Feng Xiaoqing will not accept your challenge. Who do you want to find? Tell your sister and I'll help you find that person. Shang Xing said in a deep voice, This matter is not something you can get involved in. Just help me find Feng Xiaoqing. He will accept it. Even if he doesn't, I'll force him to accept it. Also, spread the news of this matter. That way, he will not be able to go back on his word even if he wants to after he loses. It would be best if he also bets the reputation of the human king's family on it. You have really gone mad, little monster. Hua Zhang had a sorrowful look on her face. My little monster has gone mad. The corners of Shang Xing's mouth twitched. The aura around his body suddenly erupted. His peak supreme realm cultivation was revealed at this moment. I'm not crazy. Hua Zhang's beautiful eyes widened, and her face was filled with shock. If anyone had seen the other twelve flowers at this moment, they would have noticed that the other twelve people had a look of shock on their faces at this moment. You're not crazy, but I'm going crazy. Hua Zhang hugged Shang Xing, her hands touching and poking on his body. How is that possible, little monster? How old are you? You're already. Let me go. If you won't tell me, then I won't let go. Little monster, let me cut you open and study you. How are you cultivating so quickly? After Feng Xiaoqing failed in the fight for the fate treasures in the southern region, he returned to the southern zone and continued to cultivate bitterly. He no longer suppressed his cultivation, and his strength increased rapidly. A letter was sent to him. It was a letter from the Myriad Wonder House. Someone wanted to challenge him. The price for losing was that he, Feng Xiaoqing, would have to help the challenger find out about a person or to tell him the whereabouts of that person. At the same time, news of the B asterisk starred son of the Shang family, the one called a monster, challenging the descendant of the human king's Feng family, Feng Xiaoqing, spread throughout the southern zone like wildfire. What followed was the communication talismans by the Myriad Wonder House. Mocking laughter also spread throughout the southern zone. Everyone said that the B asterisk starred son of the Shang family was overestimating himself. In order to become famous, he wanted to challenge the descendant of the human king, Feng Xiaoqing. Everyone believed that Feng Xiaoqing would not accept the challenge. How could the descendant of the human king lower himself to accept the challenge of the B asterisk starred son of the Shang family? However, contrary to everyone's expectations, Feng Xiaoqing actually accepted the challenge. All of the cultivators in the southern zone were dumbfounded. They really could not understand why he had done so. At this moment, the Shang family was in uproar. They had convened a meeting of the family elders. The family elders were all extremely furious. They called his actions a disgrace to the Shang family, and wanted to expel him from the Shang family. Shang Bang was also shocked by Shang Xing's actions. He had never expected that Shang Xing would take action so quickly and directly challenge Feng Xiaoqing. Regardless of whether Shang Xing won or lost, this matter would not end there. Shang Bang was also very hesitant as to how to proceed. 
The Feng family was also very surprised. They did not understand why Feng Xiaoqing would accept the challenge. Many of the Feng family's younger generation were furious, thinking that this was a provocation by the Shang family. The Feng family's higher-ups remained silent. Chapter 276 The Western Region is now part of the Heavenly Tao. The Southern Zone was in an uproar because of Shang Xing's challenge. The Human King's Feng family once again appeared in the spotlight. They had always kept a low profile. The other forces knew that they existed, but knew very little about them. They only knew that every thousand years, a chosen member of the Feng family would roam the Southern Zone, showcasing his talent and strength to the world. Other than that, the family did not interfere in any of the major powers' fights. The chosen member of this generation was Feng Xiaoqing. He had reached the emperor realm before he was a hundred years old. He had once swept through all the experts within the same cultivation realm in the Southern Zone. He was publicly recognized as the number one genius among the younger generation. Shang Xing, on the other hand, was not famous in the Southern Zone. He only had some fame within the eastern region of the Southern Zone. However, he was not famed for being a genius, but rather a B asterisk starred in a monster. If the Shang family was not a major family with a long history of refining artifacts in the eastern region, he would not even be famous at all. However, his name was now spreading like wildfire. Everyone now knew that he was the B asterisk starred son of the Shang family, and that he was a monster. Many people even speculated that the Shang family was deliberately trying to make the Feng family look like fools. Where did the Shang family get their confidence from? No matter how low key they were, the Feng family was a human king's family. What confused everyone further was why did Feng Xiaoqing accept the challenge? The day of the battle was fast approaching. There were not many people who knew the location of the battle. Even so, the location of the battle was still filled with experts and elites from various large factions. Shang Bang and a few Shang family elders had also come. This included the elites of the younger generation of the Shang family. The Shang family was famous for refining artifacts. Their combat strength might be a little weaker, but when combined with the weapons, armors and artifacts they had refined, they were definitely not weaker than anyone else. Feng Xiaoqing had arrived, but Shang Xing had not. Feng Xiaoqing was the chosen one of the Feng family. Naturally, he would not be alone. There were no lack of Dao protectors present. A boat-shaped artifact flew over from afar. Shang Xing stood on the flying boat. The flying boat was a flying artifact he had refined. As standing beside him was Hua Ziying from the Myriad Wonders House. At this moment, Hua Ziying had already fused with twelve clones. After all, the battle between Shang Xing and Feng Xiaoqing would be extraordinary. She had to have the strength to deal with the situation. Shang Xing disembarked from the flying boat and walked onto the platform. He stood opposite Feng Xiaoqing. I didn't expect you to be that little monster from the Shang family, Feng Xiaoqing sighed. He had returned empty-handed from the fight for the fate treasures of the Northern Zone. Naturally, he had a deep impression of Shang Xing and the others. The onlookers were all surprised. Feng Xiaoqing already knew Shang Xing? I've heard that you are very proud. I happen to have some questions that I need to ask you, but since we are not friends, there is no reason why you would answer me. That's why I came up with this plan, Shang Xing said calmly. Feng Xiaoqing had already reached the third level of the Supreme Realm, which was monstrous by everyone's standards. However, Shang Xing and the others had cultivated in the pocket dimension. Moreover, the resources and guidance they had access to was not something Feng Xiaoqing had. Although Shang Xing was already at the peak of the Supreme Realm, he was not someone who would use his cultivation level to oppress others. Moreover, he really wanted to compete with Feng Xiaoqing. Feng Xiaoqing shook his head and laughed lightly. My pride is for others. I naturally cannot be proud in front of you, Brother Shang. If Brother Shang has any questions, I will naturally tell you everything. However, since the challenge has already been decided, let's have a battle. It just so happens that I want to experience your great skills, Brother Shang. As Feng Xiaoqing spoke, a fire phoenix rose from behind him. Then let's have a battle. Shang Xing also revealed the power of the third level of the Supreme Realm. Scarlet armor appeared over his body, and flames soared into the sky. His entire body transformed into a giant flaming figure. The great sunburning sky technique. The onlookers were shocked beyond words, and their mockery ceased. Shang Xing was very strong. He was not weaker than Feng Xiaoqing at all. The terrifying flames he exuded seemed to be able to burn everything. Hua Ziying was astonished. Shang Xing actually wanted to compete with Feng Xiaoqing by suppressing his cultivation level? Perhaps this was the pride of a true heaven's blessed. He would not suppress others with his cultivation level. The heavenly Tao talisman floated in front of Chu Zan. 
At this moment, the heavenly Dao laws were about to encompass the western region. There was only a tiny bit left. He raised his hand and tapped the heavenly Dao talisman. He used his fate Dao principle to control the western region's fate. At the same time, the fate suppressing Dao cauldron was activated. The western region's region was bound to the heavenly Dao laws. Finally, it was complete. Your heavenly Dao talisman plan has taken a step forward. It has encompassed the western region of the northern zone. You have been rewarded with a Dao realm level advancement. Chu Zan was overjoyed. Next would be the eastern region. Chu Pingfan was now the son of the fate of the eastern region, thus, it would not be too difficult for him to make progress there. Moreover, after taking over the western region, the heavenly Dao laws became stronger. The western region was, after all, stronger than the southern region. The moment the western region was encompassed by the heavenly Dao laws, the half-step divine realm experts, and the divine realm experts who had returned from the desolate ancient zone to the western region, suddenly gained certain insights. It seemed that the laws of heaven and earth in the western region had changed. At the same time, they felt that it was easier to cultivate now. This was especially true for the divine realm experts. For some reason, the great Tao, which was originally unpredictable and difficult to comprehend, had become clearer now. Was the great Tao Yuan calamity coming? Their first thought was to suspect that the great Tao Yuan calamity was coming. They communicated with each other to discuss things, and soon realized that only the western region had changed. This change was very similar to the south region. Thus, some heaven realm experts bought the master of the heavenly Tao, close contact with the heavenly Tao, and other secret manuals from the black moon tower. After reading them, their comprehension ability increased, and their bottlenecks were actually loosened. There was an old heaven realm expert who had exhausted his lifespan and was waiting to die. However, when he read the secret manuals, he actually experienced an epiphany and suddenly touched the threshold of the divine realm. He was glowing with new vitality, and his lifespan had been increased to a certain extent. After this news spread, the old heaven realm experts of the northern zone all rushed to the western region and bought the entire set of secret manuals from the Black Moon Tower. These old experts were mostly on their last legs, and had only stuck around to see the conclusion of the battle at the Asura ancient land. They wanted to join hands to oppose Sao Tieni at the critical moment. In the end, they did not need to. Originally, they only had one wish, which was to pass on their legacy. However, now that they saw the hope of breaking through, how could they not be excited? They were so excited that tears were streaming down their faces. The heavenly Tao was awesome and merciful. Chu Zan was comprehending the changes to the heavenly Tao laws, when your disciple, Shang Xing, defeated the descendant of the human king and became famous throughout the southern zone. His fate has transformed. You have been rewarded with a lump of chaotic energy and an upgrade to your fate Tao principle. Chapter 277 Bing Luoxing the surprise came too suddenly. Chu Zan was overjoyed. This disciple of his was really capable. Shang Xing had just returned to the southern zone not too long ago, yet he had already given Chu Zan such a big surprise. Teaching and nurturing him had not been in vain. Chu Zan received the reward. The chaotic energy grew stronger, and its ability to temper his Tao principles strengthened as well. His fate Tao principle rose by one level. Following that, he received the cultivation boost reward. The cultivation increased by one level, and Chu Zan once again entered a mysterious state. The fourth level of the Tao realm, he comprehended a new Tao principle. He had finally caught up with the weakest cultivator in the great Tao communication group, Ying Kong. Chu Zan was confident that, given his strength, it would be no problem for him to crush Ying Kong. The feeling of increasing one's cultivation level was great. Chu Zan couldn't wait to devour the eastern region. At that time, his cultivation level would rise again. The northern zone was very calm. Countless experts gathered in the western and southern regions to gain the benefits of cultivating under the heavenly Tao laws. In the blink of an eye, five years had passed. The eastern region had already become part of the heavenly Tao laws. The northern region had also become part of the heavenly Tao laws. At present, only the central region was left. Chu Zan's cultivation level had risen to the sixth level of the Tao realm. The development of the Black Moon Tower in the eastern zone had gone smoothly thanks to the assistance of the Luo family. Communication talismans had become a must-have item for the cultivators there. Just like the northern region, they had created information services such as the news headlines and talismans. Communication talismans had also begun to spread in the demon zone and monster zone, and were also being promoted within the southern zone. Everything was progressing according to plan. Recently, the divine realm cultivators had been appearing frequently in the eight zones. Many large factions saw their divine realm ancestors return. 
Among some factions that were once enemies, one side had a divine realm ancestor return, while the other side did not. As a result, the ones without were exterminated. This caused chaos in a number of zones. The northern zone also had divine realm experts return, but they were relatively low profile and did not attract much attention. If the other party dared to cause trouble, Chu Zan did not mind sacrificing them for the growth of the heavenly Dao laws. After all, the comprehension of that divine realm expert from the great evil palace had already been used up. The great Qin dynasty also developed rapidly over the years, and their armies had already started to take shape. It was worth mentioning that Qin Ying had come back and specially taught and trained the great Qin army, wanting to rebuild the army of his past life. Qin Qian, the great empress, was becoming more and more powerful and ambitious, she was no longer satisfied with unifying the southern region. However, her strength and talent could not support her ambition. Chu Zan did not continue to give her more support. Even if she wanted to unify the northern zone, she could not. Qin Ying could, but his current focus was the eastern zone. It was not yet time to unify the northern zone. After the northern zone came under the heavenly Dao laws, he would unify it and gather his strength to deal with the great Dao Yuan calamity. As for the person who would unify the northern zone, Chu Zan already had a candidate in mind. Hey you! She cultivated the heavenly Tao scripture, and regardless of whether it was in terms of methods or knowledge, she was capable enough to shoulder this heavy responsibility. Moreover, she had the heavenly Tao seal that Chu Zan had bestowed upon her. To a certain extent, she could control the power of the heavenly Tao laws. Chu Zan was nurturing her to become the first supreme heavenly Tao expert. The central region was the core of the northern zone, and thus the expansion of the heavenly Tao laws here was the slowest. It would take a few years before the heavenly Dao laws would completely encompass the central region. Still, once they were done with the central region, their work in the northern zone should be pretty much done. Chu Zan took out the Chaos Dao mirror and began to search for experts again. Over the past five years, a few Dao realm experts from other races had been added to the Great Dao Communication Group. However, there were no new Dao Yuan realm experts. Hong Yuanchu and the others continued to inquire about the Great Calamity, but to no avail. They even met up with other Dao Yuan realm experts, but failed to find any useful information. However, they did not pull in these Dao Yuan realm experts into the group, as they were not too familiar with that group. Also, joining the Great Dao Communication Group was a fortuitous opportunity, and one that they would not give to just anyone. Chu Zong could not say anything about this. He could not directly ask Hong Yuanchu to drag them in, after all, that would make his motive too obvious. Chu Zong kept them in suspense. A scene appeared on the Chaos Dao mirror. A huge iceberg could be seen. As the image projection zoomed in, more than ten snow-white cocoons were in an ice cave. Behind these cocoons, a beautiful woman with jade-like skin sat cross-legged on an ice bed. Her body was covered in a thin, snow-white veil, and her graceful figure gave off a hazy feeling. It might have seemed like a thin veil, but it made it impossible to see her body clearly. Chu Zong was surprised. There was finally a Dao Yuan realm expert other than from the human, monster, and demon races. Her information appeared on the Chaos Dao mirror. Bing Luoxing was born in the middle stage of the fourth Dao Yuan. She was one of the ancestors of the Ice Silkworm race, and opened her Dao path at the end of the sixth Dao Yuan. Chu Zong was shocked. This ancestor of the Ice Silkworm race was actually born in the fourth Dao Yuan and opened her Dao path at the end of the sixth Dao Yuan. She had lived quite a long life, and had taken two full Dao Yuan to open her Dao path. It had to be said that her lifespan was very long moreover, her luck was also excellent. She had actually survived two great Dao Yuan calamities before opening her Dao path. In terms of seniority and age, she was much older than the people from Hong Yuan Chu's time. Chu Zan did not know if she knew about the great Dao calamity, but since she was born during the fourth Dao Yuan, there was a high probability that she did not know. At the same time, Chu Zan was also very curious. Was there a person who opened their Dao path during the first Dao Yuan? Or even a Dao Yuan realm expert from the Eighth Great Dao era? Could some have survived? The waters of the Nine Zones were a little deep. Fortunately, these experts were all staying in the void zone of the primordial land and wouldn't enter the Nine Zones. Chu Zan did not choose to move Bing Luoxing into the Great Dao Communication Group immediately. Instead, he greeted her, Hello, fellow Taoist. Bing Luoxing opened her eyes. Her expression was calm and as cold as ever. Perhaps the shock in her heart did not show on her face. Who are you? My name is Chu Zan. I have established a great Dao communication group. Those who are fated may enter, and it so happens that I stumbled upon fellow Taoist. Bing Luoxing was silent for a moment before she said, I don't want to be disturbed. 
Chapter 278 Opportunities Within the Calamity Fellow Taoist, if you don't want to be disturbed, you can ignore the messages in the group. Besides, a great calamity is coming. Fellow Taoist, you should make some preparations and communicate with the other fellow Taoists, Chu Zan said with a smile. Great calamity? The great Dao Yuan? What does it have to do with us? Bing Luoxing asked with a frown. The great Dao Yuan calamity is a minor calamity. The true great calamity comes after that, and even Dao Yuan realm experts will fall. Really? Bing Luoxing asked. Chu Zan smiled. As expected, as long as it involved the great Dao calamity, no one would be able to remain calm. Naturally. All right, I'm willing to join the group then, Bing Luoxing said after a moment of silence. Chu Zan pretended to ask for her name. Then, he moved Bing Luoxing into the group. Welcome, fellow Taoist Bing Luoxing. Then, he added, fellow Taoist Bing Luoxing opened her Dao path before fellow Taoist Hong. Oh, you opened your Dao path before I did. Hong Yuanshu did not seem to believe it. Mo Tu did not believe it either. He said, up until now, I haven't seen a second person who opened their Dao path before we did. As for why he said, second person, it was because in their hearts, Chu Zan had definitely opened his Dao path before them. Fellow Taoist Hong, you opened your Dao path at the end of the seventh Dao Yuan, while fellow Taoist Bing Luoxing opened her path at the end of the sixth Dao Yuan. Furthermore, fellow Taoist Bing Luoxing was born during the middle stages of the fourth Dao Yuan. The group fell silent once more. Bing Luoxing was shocked as well. How did the other party know that she was born during the middle stages of the fourth Dao Yuan? Bing Luoxing did some calculations. If they were currently in the ninth Dao Yuan, then she was indeed born during the fourth Dao Yuan. Which Dao Yuan is Brother Chu from? Hong Yuan Chu cautiously asked. Had Brother Chu opened his Dao path during the first Dao Yuan? Hiss. An old senior. Chu Zan said enigmatically, I don't think in terms of Dao Yuan. After saying that, he fell silent and remained mysterious. Bing Luoxing was a person of few words. After entering the group, she only responded to Huang Long's greeting, and then fell silent. Another Dao Yuan realm expert had been added to the group. It was about time to set up a group for the Dao Yuan realm experts. Otherwise, it would be a bit demeaning for a group of big shots to mingle with a group of Dao realm newbies. Moreover, the communication and secrets between Dao Yuan realm experts were not suitable for Dao realm cultivators to know. This was also one of the reasons why the Dao Yuan realm experts were relatively inactive in the Great Dao Communication Group. Moreover, once this group was established, Chu Zan would be able to gain a lot of information about the Dao Yuan realm from them. He would also be able to further hasten the upgrade of the origin Dao crystal. Dong. Suddenly, a muffled sound rang out. Su Shenner ran over and asked in surprise, Sir, what happened? Chu Zan's expression was slightly solemn as he said, The great Dao Yuan calamity is about to arrive. The muffled sound spread throughout the nine zones. Chu Zan could sense that the laws of heaven and earth outside the northern zone were rippling. The northern zone had almost been fully encompassed by the heavenly Dao laws, which was why there were no fluctuations. When Su Shenner heard this, her expression changed slightly as she asked, Sir, what should we do? Chu Zan smiled and replied, There's no need to worry. It's just a minor calamity. However, there is also fate and opportunities within the calamity. If you want to, you can enter the calamity and fight for them. Su Shenner blinked her beautiful eyes and smiled sweetly, I'm not going to enter the calamity. I want to accompany Sir. I'm sir's maidservant, so how can I leave? That's fine too. Chu Zan raised his head and looked at the sky. He was looking at the laws of heaven and earth beyond the northern zone. Following that muffled sound, the laws of heaven and earth began to fluctuate. Spatial seals became unstable. In the following period of time, many ancient battlefields would appear in the nine zones one after another. The blood fiend race would charge out from those ancient battlefields. However, there were also opportunities within the calamity. With the laws in disorder, the heavenly Dao laws would be able to increase their rate of expansion. As long as he successfully devoured a portion of each of the nine zones laws of heaven and earth, he would have established a foothold for the heavenly Dao laws. Still, Chu Zan still had to consider another problem. He had to encompass the nine zones within the heavenly Dao laws in a way that they were not repelled by the great Dao. Heavenly Dao laws had to be integrated into the great Dao. In this way, it would be equal to the great Dao. The key to this was the origin Dao crystal. The main reason why the heavenly Dao laws had not been repelled by the great Dao thus far was because the heavenly Dao talisman was nourished by the origin Dao crystal, which was connected to the great Dao. Perhaps he might even be able to take advantage of the calamities to devour a portion of the great Dao itself. Chu Zan swallowed a mouthful of saliva. 
he felt that his ambition was a bit too great. However, the foundation of all his plans hinged on the transformation and upgrade of the Origin Dao Crystal. Furthermore, he needed a foothold in the other eight zones first. The Eastern and Southern zones already had a foothold, as did the Demon and Monster zones. Currently, only the Western Zone, Central Zone, Chaos Zone, and the Desolate Ancient Zone were untouched. Moreover, the Desolate Ancient Zone was relatively special. He would not be able to create a foothold by relying on the distribution of communication talismans. Moreover, the central area of the Desolate Ancient Zone was the Desolate Ancient Primordial Land, where the Dao Realm experts resided. It would be difficult to carry out the Heavenly Dao Talisman plan there undetected. However, when the Great Dao Yuan Calamity was at its most intense, and the Dao Realm experts entered the Calamity, there would be an opportunity for Chu Zan to act. However, he also had to consider the Void Zone where the Dao Yuan Realm experts resided. Chu Zan pondered on this matter for some time. He figured that it was best if he started by deceiving Ying Kong and the other Dao Realm cultivators by giving them something which would establish a foothold in the desolate ancient zone. At the same time, he needed to make some preparations for the outer regions of the desolate ancient zone. It was time to give Ren Chongha some missions, and maybe use Luo Ming as well. Chapter 279 Qian Region Qian Ming Chu Zan thought about how to establish footholds in the western, central and chaos zones. He did not have a disciple from the western zone, and although Hei Yu was from the central zone, her identity was special, and she did not have the necessary strength to tackle the central zone, which was the strongest of the nine zones, and also the core of the human race. The chaos zone was a relatively special zone. The various races of the nine zones were active in the chaos zone, and they all intermingled and fought there. The great evil palace was from the chaos zone. Since the little evil king had a grudge to settle with the evil son, it might be a good idea to send him there. The only problem was that the little evil king was not strong enough. In any case, he did not need to bother about what the little evil king could do. He just needed to use him as an agent to introduce the communication talismans to the chaos zone. Chu Zan decided to send Du Yuan to be the little evil king's backer. However, Du Yuan was also a little weak, so Chu Zan would need to raise his cultivation level first. Chu Zan had enough treasures to do this anyway. After making the decision, Chu Zan called Du Yuan over. He gave Du Yuan two Dao fruits and asked him to cultivate in the pocket dimension and break through to the divine realm quickly, as he had a mission for him. Du Yuan was very excited. After Du Yuan left, Su Shenner expressed her envy. Sir, give me one to taste. Chu Zan rubbed her head and said, Have you not already consumed a lot of heavenly treasures? You are different from him. You have to cultivate diligently. Only by cultivating step by step will you have a solid foundation that doesn't limit your future cultivation. Still, Su Shenner wanted to at least taste the Dao fruit. Chu Zan did not know whether to laugh or cry. He said, When you're about to break through to the heaven realm, I'll give you one. Thank you, sir. Su Shenner smiled sweetly. Chu Zan was muttering to himself. When would he let this little maidservant leave and explore the world? He also wanted to see if she could trigger the system's rewards for him out there. Without the process of cultivation and adventure, how could they trigger the system's reward for him? Therefore, even if Chu Zan had treasures and the ability to quickly increase the strength of his disciples, he would not do so. When Du Yuan broke through to the Divine Realm, he would bring the little evil king to the Chaos Zone. Perhaps the little evil king might even successfully take revenge on the evil son while he was there. That might even trigger a system reward. Chu Zan looked at the lucky mystic realms in the courtyard. Since the western and central zones were a blank slate, he would set them up there. He would place even more treasures and cultivation techniques in them. They would be of a higher level than before. Chu Zan took out the myriad heavenly mirror. It had been a long time since he had used its random connection function. He currently lacked manpower to carry out the Heavenly Dao Talisman plan, especially in the central and western zones. It was time to try his luck. Sort of. As Chu Zan activated the myriad heavenly mirror, the Fate Dao principle swirled around him. He focused on the thought of finding a child of fate. Fate was extremely mysterious. Now that he possessed the Fate Dao principle, Chu Zan naturally had to use it to find a disciple for himself. The scene on the myriad heavenly mirror unfolded. Central Zone, Qian Region. Compared to the northern, southern, eastern, and western zones, the central zone was the largest and was divided into ten regions. Qian region was one of the ten regions of the central zone. Its overall strength was ranked second, second only to the central region. Qian Ming was covered in injuries. He lay in a desolate valley and panted. His eyes were filled with confusion and a trace of despair. He hailed from an ordinary background and had grown up in a small village. After going through many ups and downs, he finally joined a sect. 
This sect was not considered a major force in the Qian region, and only had one Heaven Realm ancestor in charge. Still, for Qian Ming, it was already a very lucky thing to be able to join such a sect and obtain a proper cultivation technique. Unfortunately, the good times did not last long. Within three years of joining the sect, he had been bullied because he had offended the grandson of the sect's ancestor. The other party had treated him like a source of entertainment. In order to tease him, they had intentionally asked a senior sister to pretend to like him and treat him with kindness. Then, the other party had suddenly appeared and snatched his senior sister away in front of him, he then insulted her and mocked him. He was furious and wanted to kill the grandson. However, the sad thing was that this was just a show to make fun of him. His senior sister's kindness was fake. Qian Ming was completely dumbfounded. At that moment, he almost broke down. Still, his tenacity helped him to endure, and he became taciturn and ignored the other party's mockery. It was as if he had lost his soul. Then, when the ancestor's grandson felt that it was no longer interesting and tried to kill him, Qian Ming found the right opportunity to attack. He killed the ancestor's grandson swiftly and decisively. However, he naturally was pursued and hunted down after that. During this process, Qian Ming experienced many twists and turns before finally breaking through to the first level of the Emperor Realm. However, he lacked a cultivation technique. No matter how talented he was and how determined he was, the lack of a proper cultivation technique was an obstacle that he could not overcome. Then, the ancestor of the sect personally made a move to pursue and kill him. Facing a Heaven Realm expert, Qian Ming felt despair. He was only an Emperor Realm cultivator. After escaping to this valley, Qian Ming was at the end of his rope. He had consumed too much spiritual power, and his entire body was exhausted. He was lost and in despair. Qian Ming did not understand. Why was his life like that? He clearly had talent, so why did he always encounter setbacks again and again? After leaving the small village, he had been ranked at the top of the Empire's Academy assessment. However, because a certain unruly young lady from a large family was dissatisfied with him and loathed him, she had disqualified him from the assessment. After going through many twists and turns and narrowly escaping death several times, he finally left that empire and entered the sect with great difficulty. However, in the end, he ended up like this. Qian Ming even suspected that he was cursed with bad luck. It seemed that this was the end for him. Chapter 280 Taking Qian Ming as a Disciple Qian Ming could already sense the powerful aura of the Heaven Realm sect ancestor approaching. It was hopeless. A mere Emperor Realm cultivator had no way to resist a Heaven Realm expert, much less escape. Qian Ming trembled as he prepared himself for death. Suddenly, there seemed to be some slight fluctuations in the valley. A halo appeared in the sky. Then, an unknown spatial passage suddenly materialized not far above him, and a small courtyard appeared at the end of that passage. The seven-colored divine light was bewitching, and a figure exuding heaven-shaking power was shrouded amidst the radiance of that light, making it impossible to see his face clearly. Qian Ming was shocked. What kind of terrifying expert was this? Divine Realm. Chu Zan was a little stunned when he discovered Qian Ming lying in the valley. This young man's talent was indeed quite good. Could it be that the geniuses of the central zone were all like this? He was not even 30 years old, yet had already reached the first level of the Emperor Realm. He must have obtained an extraordinary fortuitous encounter. He was also a son of fate. It was obvious that he was being chased. Chu Zan had already noticed the Heaven Realm expert charging over. An ordinary Emperor Realm cultivator would definitely die after encountering a Heaven Realm expert. However, this man in front of him would not die. This valley was somewhat unusual. If nothing unexpected happened, before the Heaven Realm expert arrived, the valley would swallow him into the ground. Heaven's Secrets Origin Probing Technique This time, Chu Zan activated the Myriad Heavenly Mirror while using his Fate Dao Principle, so he was pretty excited to see the results. Qian Ming, the son of fate of the Central Zone's Qian Prefecture, came from a humble background and has experienced many hardships. After reading through Qian Ming's information, Chu Zan clicked his tongue in wonder. All of these children of fate experienced many hardships in the early stages of their lives. This guy, Qian Ming, was a little too miserable. He had just fallen in love with his gentle senior sister, but in the end, she was snatched away and humiliated in front of the villain. When he was on the verge of going mad with hatred, the cruel truth was exposed. The gentle senior sister had only been ordered to pretend to like him. It was really miserable. However, he was still a son of fate. He would not die even after experiencing hardships. For example, this time, was he really in a dangerous place? This ordinary valley contained hidden secrets that suited him perfectly. 
It would also save his life and give him the opportunity to obtain an inheritance. From then on, he would soar and become famous. However, since Chu Zan had appeared, he naturally would not allow him to be taken by the valley. The fortune and opportunity in the valley had been left behind by a peak divine realm expert. Compared to him, a Dao realm expert, it was not worth mentioning. This peak divine realm expert should just wait for another successor. This fated son would be Chu Zan's. Qian Ming pays respect to senior. Qian Ming struggled to get up and knelt on the ground with his head on the ground. Chu Zan was very satisfied with his reaction and attitude. He was smart enough to grasp the opportunity when it presented itself. Young man, greetings, it is fate that we meet today. A ray of light shone down. Qian Ming immediately realized that his injuries were completely healed and that his strength had recovered to its peak. At the same time, a figure charged over from outside the valley. Kid, I'm going to tear you into pieces to avenge my grandson. Qian Ming raised his head and looked at the other party, not panicking in the slightest. Noisy. A soft shout came from within the mysterious halo of light. The sect ancestor, a dignified heaven realm expert, noiselessly turned into a bloody mist and dispersed. Too powerful. Qian Ming swallowed a mouthful of saliva. Just how powerful was this mysterious senior? With a single word, he killed a heaven realm expert. Even a divine realm expert could not do that, right? Thank you for saving my life, senior. Qian Ming respectfully kowtowed. There's no need to be so polite. I happen to be strolling through the nine zones. It's also an opportunity for you to have met me. Hum. Looking at your level of talent, are you willing to take me as your master? Chu Zan asked with a smile. I'm willing. Qian Ming was overjoyed. His opportunity had finally come. He kowtowed respectfully once again and said, Disciple Qian Ming greets master. Good, good. Chu Zan was very satisfied. He could finally prepare to create a foothold in the central zone. Since you've acknowledged me as your master, I'll teach you a cultivation technique. Chu Zan had too many cultivation techniques. Now that this son of fate had acknowledged him as his master, he needed to give him a boost so that his new disciple would be able to start triggering system rewards for him. After examining Qian Ming's talent and aptitude, Chu Zan found a technique that suited him the most. Heaven and Earth Myriad Transformation Technique Qian Ming was so excited that he cried, he finally had a proper cultivation technique. For a single technique, he had put in a lot of effort, but in the end, he had suffered many setbacks. Moreover, the techniques he had found were all too ordinary. Chu Zan began to teach Qian Ming the technique. Naturally, he also taught his new disciple the standard set of secret techniques that his other disciples had. Concealing one's aura, changing one's appearance, and so on. As well as the aurora technique, which was famous for its speed. In the future, when these disciples met each other in the Nine Zones, they would be able to recognize that they were from the same sect after seeing their unique cultivation techniques and auras. Other than cultivation techniques, he naturally also had to provide his new disciple with cultivation resources. After all, Qian Ming was a bit too miserable. Moreover, his new disciple would be in charge of creating the foothold in the central region for the implementation of the Heavenly Dao Talisman Plan. As such, he had to get stronger quickly. He also passed the communication talismans and their refining method to Qian Ming. He wanted him to find an opportunity to make use of it. Whether it was to sell it to a large faction in the central zone or to cooperate with a large faction, it was up to him. Of course, given Qian Ming's current strength, there was a high chance that he would be devoured by a large faction. As long as the communication talismans spread throughout the central zone, it would be fine. Chu Zan did not care whether the profits from selling the communication talismans went to Qian Ming or not. After imparting the cultivation and secret techniques, and giving him sufficient cultivation resources, he also gave him emperor-level, heavenly and divine artifacts. At the same time, he covered the valley and set up a large formation. This would allow Qian Ming to cultivate in peace so that his strength could rise to a higher level. Qian Ming cherished this opportunity very much. He worked hard in the valley to cultivate. When he became powerful, he would destroy that sect. He wanted to make those who had mocked him in the past pay for their sins. He had wandered from place to place and experienced many hardships throughout his life. It was impossible for him to not have any resentment in his heart. He wanted to become stronger and return to the dynasty to tell those people that they were not worthy of being treated with respect by him, he wanted to destroy that sect too. Furthermore, he wanted to spread the communication talisman. He also wanted to establish a faction or join a super faction to become an elder. He had a master now, so it was impossible for him to become a disciple of another faction. However, he could become a guest elder. Qian Ming hailed from a humble background. 
He knew very well that without great strength, it would be difficult for him to achieve much in life. Strength was the foundation of everything. After ending the connection with Qian Ming, Chu Zong looked forward to the communication talismans spreading in the central zone. 